Well done, Jason Aldean, and thanks for being part of our team for the third straight year. And with that, the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to Columbia, South Carolina. And the matchup, the number two team in the country, the Crimson Tide of Alabama against the hometown Gamecocks of South Carolina. As Adam Zucker would say, it's a beautiful day if you like 87 degrees and sunshine when you're playing football. Over 80,000 on hand. And we welcome you, everybody. As Jason said, we're back. We're back. I felt like everybody else was getting dessert and we were on a diet for a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, the diet's over, my friend. Yeah. South Carolina and Alabama, as we welcome you to the 19th year of the SEC on CBS, my partner's Gary Danielson. These two teams don't get together very often. No, they don't. Uh, I remember the last one, and it was a good one, 2010, right? And they don't play again for five more years, but the one Gary's talking about, the mayhem that was williams Bryce Stadium nine years ago. Steven Garcia had the game of his life, 17 out of 20, a couple of touchdown passes to Alshon Jeffrey. Marcus Lattimore was unbelievable on the ground, and yes, indeed, the 19th ranked Gamecocks picked off the number one Crimson Tide of Alabama for the old ball coach. Can it happen again? You know, everybody talked to Coach Saban about it this week and said, are you going to use that as motivation for your kids? He said, I'll have to ask them. They were all in grade school. I know. But he's also said in the past, Ness, that you never let a loss go to waste. And I'm sure he told his team, like, we were loaded that year. We had more talent in South Carolina, number one in the country, 19 straight wins. But you know what? We didn't show up, and we got our butts kicked at the line of scrimmage. So the lesson is, don't just roll your helmets out. Now, the lesson for South Carolina is, do your job, look up at the end of the game, and maybe you can steal one. Well, much like the Alabama team that year and the Alabama team last year and the year before, they're right. loaded again. They really are. You know, it starts with their quarterback this year. We all know that. In this league, whether it's the NFL or in college football, when you've got a veteran guy and the type of seasons that Tua has had, I mean, it's historic what he was doing. He got injured at the end of the year, but you know the best news for him? The four guys he throws to, and I don't know if I ever remember a team with four weapons like this. One's as good as the next. They all have different skills. It will be a challenge for any team to corral those four guys in Tua. You know, when we looked at this on the schedule, we thought, we're going to see one of our favorite guys, Jake Bentley. Jake's injured. Right. He's out for the season. He's home watching right now with his mom, Paulette, I think. But in steps a freshman, and Ryan Holinsky was pretty darn good last week. Well, you don't get a scholarship to a power or five conference at quarterback if you're not a good player. He's got a lot of talent. I don't really know if he understands the enormity of what he's walking into, but that may be good. He's got the arm. He played a game. He got his feet wet. What he has to concentrate on is just doing his job and hope his other 21 guys show up. I predict that it will not be him that determines the game if they lose. It'll be all 22 guys. With more on Ryan Olinsky, his family, and their 20-month journey, check in with the third member of our team, Jamie Urdahl. Jamie? Brad, the final line of South Carolina's alma mater is forever to be. It's a phrase you see around campus. It's sung by alumni and students alike. And it's a phrase that resonates within the heart of that true freshman quarterback, Ryan Olinsky, because the words are so eerily similar to ones he lives by every day, forever to three, in honor of his brother Tyler, who wore number three as a quarterback at Washington State. Tyler took his own life in January of 2018, and since then the family has worked tirelessly on their Linsky Hope Foundation with a goal to educate, advocate, and remove the stigma with mental illness within the student-athlete community. Ryan does what he can off the field. He had a remarkable and emotional first start last week for South Carolina, Brad. Now there is a call to action amongst this community at the start of the second half to hold up that number three that we saw from Ryan last week in support to honor Tyler and to What a story, what a setting, what a scene. The Gamecocks take the field against the number two team in the country. There comes South Carolina. And second ranked Alabama. The Tide, the Gamecocks in Columbia. Coming up next. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Chick-fil-A.
Progressive. Just for Men Control GX. And by Bud Light. One of the great scenes, not only in the SEC, but all the country. The white rally towels, sandstorm. Gamecocks won the toss. They deferred. So Alabama set to receive a sticky day in the south in mid-September, as you would only imagine. 86 degrees right now. This is only the 16th meeting between these two teams. Carolina's won three of the last five, two of the last three here on their home turf. Will Talley to kick Henry Ruggs and Brian Robinson. Back deep for Alabama, and here we go. And it's going to go out of bounds at about the two-yard line. With the flag down, Alabama will bring it out offensively for the first time. Free kick out of bounds. Number 48, the kicking team. Receiving team will take the ball to the 35-yard line. First down. That is not an omen that makes Will Muschamp happy. Remember, we were here for the Georgia opening last year, and they were not ready to start that game. They made a lot of unforced errors, penalties, uh, turnovers, drop balls. Let's see if they can settle down and play football. That's an unforced error, kicking the ball out of bounds on the opening kick to Adagabalola in the gun. Najee Harris flanked to his left. Judy in motion as Tagovailoa set to throw, rips it across the middle, completes a first down, are going to be very close to Devontae Smith as we take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with number 13. Gary's already talked about him. We've been talking about him for two years. A sensational player. Two is 16 and one as a starter. The lone loss was to Clemson in the national championship. So just a little bit short on Devontae's reception at second down and a short one. Blitz coming, Najee Harris coming, and busting through. And Najee Harris out for about 11 yards and a first down. Let's take a look at the rest of the offense for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, including the guys up front. And the man we highlight for a reason is Najee Harris, because they want to get the ground game going, Gary, and so far so good. Yeah, in the Nick Saban era at Alabama, in the first two games, he's never had a lower average for his top three running backs than he's had in the first two games. Tied already in Gamecock territory. The RPO and the throw is complete. It's Devontae Smith again, and Smith's all the way down inside the 25. So Alabama rolling here. A pickup of 20. There's two parts of this Alabama offense. One part Brad just told you about, the RPO part. They were devastating with that a year ago early in the season. They would just march down the field. Steve Sarkeesian is going to try to add more to that offense this year, more play action more called runs more things to take a little pressure off the quarterback three wide outs to the near side and one to the top of the screen and now waddle in motion to it looks his way now looks back the other and incomplete in and out of the hands of his intended receiver Devonte smith south carolina defensively got some good guys up front to try to get some pressure in the middle in Wadham and Kinlaw, but J.C. Horn's the guy that's going to be busy today. They'd like to match him up against Jerry Judy if they can, Gary. Yeah, and, and if you get him on him, that solves one problem. That trick of playing against this team, Alabama, is, as we mentioned in the open, they got four of them. And you can can you get Tua to try to spread the ball and make some mistakes? Tiger below a set, fires, far side, wide open. Touchdown, Najee Harris. Alabama Well, you know that you know that play looked exactly like to me the New Orleans Saints play against the Rams that ended the game. You fake it to the back, the back continues to go, and this time no one goes with them. And Tua doesn't overthrow it. Watch you fake the sweep. Najee's gonna go wide. Watch him on the swing route. Nobody goes with him. And this time there's no pass interference. There's a touchdown. Will Reichert in for the point after. A methodical drive. 7-0 Alabama. 65 yards in five plays. And Tua Tagovailoa 
27 straight wins when they score on the opening drive. They're off to a good start. A 24 yard strike and Najee Harris's first career receiving touchdown for Alabama. 7 0 tie. Sports app to watch today. Don't forget, Gary will join the HQ team in the post game show. If you go to CBS Sports HQ right now, it's going to tell you Alabama 7, South Carolina nothing. I think that was really nice game planning by Sarkeesian, the new coordinator for Alabama. They need Najee Davenport long term to, to get the Najee Harris, excuse me, long term to get this thing going to beat the big good teams. They got to find a way to get his, the ball in his hands and make him a weapon. Rodgers for his second kick. This one stays in bounds and goes two yards deep. Shai Smith's going to bring it out and should not have. Maybe got to the 12. Yeah, you can't stop on those kickoffs. You got, you know, 10 guys running down there. They're all under 4-5. Let's take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And starts with the quarterback. And we'll see now that he's in a 7 to nothing hole how the freshman does. But, boy, he was good last week. Hit his first 12 passes. But uh, that defense, Charleston Southern, was not Alabama. In the gun with Rico Dowdle beside him. First down Gamecocks for the 14. Brian Edwards in motion. They're just going to flip it to him. Edwards trying to get to the edge. And does a nice job across the 20. Fighting first down. That'll put a little juice in the Gamecocks right there. The senior wide receiver looked like he was going to lose yardage and he picked up a first down. You got to get the ball to the guys, your playmakers. And the way to do it is the kind of the the little jet sweep that's a pass but you know basically it's a run end of the line Kyle Markway did a good job getting the block on the edge a little more room to breathe from the 27 Edwards again in motion first down a low snap they flip it out trying to get it to Edwards and they threw it over the top of him Anthony Jennings got a hand in the way Patrick Sertan was in coverage here's the rest of the Gamecock group Brian Edwards over 100 yards receiving. He's moving up the all-time South Carolina Gamecock career marks as well, and they've already tried to get it in his hands twice. Now they throw it out to the tight end, and he got out to the 32. Mark Way, one of the captains, it'll bring up third down. Defensively for Alabama, they lose some guys due to injury or the NFL, and what do they do? They plug in three freshmen right up the middle, Harris, Lee, and Dale. Quick snap, quick slant. Close to a first down, about a yard shy or a half yard. Brian Edwards on the catch. Yeah, quick first decision for Will Muschamp. He told us yesterday, I said, What do you got to do, Will? Oh, it looks like they're going to call it a first down. Oh, so that's he's going to be able to put off that decision. I asked Will, What do you have to do on offense? Do you need balance? You got to run the ball. You got to keep it simple. He looked at me and we said, We got to score points. We're not going to be able to shut down that Alabama offense. We have, we can't keep it too simple, can't be too difficult, but we must sell out and put points on the board. For a first down, the previous play is under further review. Now the linesman, when he put his foot down, yeah. was about a foot or a foot and a half shy, I thought, and then they moved we the sticks. We both did. We yeah. both did. We're going to see how good you are after the layoff. <laughs> Talk about a layoff. You just didn't have a tea time today. Was that the problem? Well, you called. I thought it was short as well, but it was it was close. Watch up on the top of your screen too after the catch is made, where the official starts walking towards the football. That's the previous play. And so we're going to have to wait and see. I don't know how they figure this out at this point. Our official Hubert Owens is our referee. Let's bring in Gene Starr to our officials. Man, Gene, what do you got? Yes, Brad, it appears to me that the left shin makes contact with the ground, and it is where the ball is when that shin or that body part marks down so as we see the left shin hits it appears to me that the ball is about a half yard short when that shin makes contact with the ground I think they will overturn this uh, and put it short and it was right at the 37 Gene will be with us all year as our analyst from New York call on the field was a first down and as Gene told you it's not where the ball ends up it's where the shin goes down 
shin down right. right there. Yeah, just a little bit before the ball comes down, and then he falls across the line. You can understand why the officials on the field would have called it a first down, but is there enough there? Let's let's see if we can get a little closer. Shin down, ball short. I think they may. After review, the ruling is that the ball carrier was down short of the line of the game. The ball will be placed at the 36 and a half yard line, fourth down. Well, Gene Saratore gets a paycheck first week. I know. One for one. He's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> exactly. Are they going to go for it now on fourth down? First decision we talked about. Did they go for it or did they try to draw Alabama off? They got two tight ends in there. And look at they got to go shotgun. They don't take many from under center. They're going to go for it. Olinsky on the pitch. To and he's got the first down. First run of the drive and it's good for a first down. Well that's the commitment they had to have in this football game. Again it was Markway number 84 that got the block on the edge that got him to the corner to make the first down. When you watch ball game. Again it was Markway number 84 that got the block on the edge that got him to the corner to make the first down. When you watch the other team go down the field and score, you have to not only keep the ball, but understand it's probably going to take 35 points to win the game. First down from the 40. Rico Dial cuts it outside. He got the edge. Lee's helmet came off, and whoa, down goes an Alabama coach or assistant on the sideline. And let's see where they spot it. About a four yard gain. Maybe it was an SEC official, not an Alabama official. Get out of the way. Tried to hold him up. <laughs> Rico did a good job. And now the throw out in the flat completes. Well, Xavier McKinney that time. That's how you have to come up as a safety. Sure tackler. Wrap him up. Xavier, one of the best players we have in the Southeastern Conference. He will play in that nickel and dime spot as well, but he attacked that quick screen to the outside and made a sure tackle. And then leading Alabama and tacklers coming into the game. Third down and three. Glinsky, quick throw, it's up in the air to grabs, and Sertan comes down with it with the interception. I'm thinking they had 12 guys on the field, though. I counted 12. I thought they had five linemen in the game. There's a flag on the play. Remember, it should be 4-3-4. Four, four. Okay, so that's how you count them here. And I see five. <laughs> see, there's one right there, and there's on the four. Defense. There's four. Well, there's the formation. Five wide uh, Pelican. But he was right. He kept looking back to the bench and go, are you sure? Are you sure? Because <laughs> I don't think he wanted to be out there. So the hurry up for the first time got a big play against Alabama, forcing them into a mistake, a substitution mistake. And as they walk off the penalty, they're going to be in Alabama territory. Yeah, DJ Dale goes, I may be a true freshman, but I know 12 when oh, I see 12. That's right, and I know there's only supposed to be 11 <laughs> exactly. out there. Exactly. Ball at the 48 at Alabama. <laughs> Davian Feaster, the Clemson transfer in the backfield for the first time for the Gamecocks. Markway, the tight end, right up the middle to try to lead the way, and he does well. Feaster, a good run to the 41. Davian Feaster came over from Clemson after graduating. 41 games there, but 1,300 yards, second only to the guy that's still in their backfield with almost six yards of carry. And he got a good carry there to the 41 yard line. Second down and three. Olinsky throws out complete. Another first down and out of bounds. Nick Muse, the other tight end. Nick Muse is the transfer from William and Mary. They said he can be special, just got eligible. He's their re more their receiving tight end. So far, very comfortable throws for Ryan. Quick slam, quick completion. Brian Edwards, first down, South Carolina, pick up of 11. This is what you saw in practice. This is what you saw a week ago. And now, so far, Alabama is giving him those comfortable throws. So far, nothing has been contested, and he hasn't had a guy in his face yet. Five minutes into the game, South Carolina trying to answer the quick Alabama touchdown with an impressive drive right now for the 24 at the time. Helensky, quick play fake, steps up, going to go deep, end zone, just overshot his intended receiver, Josh Van. 
Trayvon Diggs in coverage that time at corner. That's one of the challenges you have against Alabama. They're going to play bump and run. They're going to challenge you to throw the ball to the outside and beat us. You got to make a good throw. This was just slightly overthrown. Almost all the success so far on this drive, Brad, has been to the left. Wonder if they see something, part of the game plan. But so far, they have been going left. Alabama's right in this football game. Either in the flat or in the slant, both. And running. And running. This time, they're going to go right. And this one's going to be wrapped up. I think it's Raycon. No, it's LeBron Ray. Should have gone left. <laughs> Maybe. Raekwon <laughs> Davis in the way. Well, Raekwon Davis, a bit of an underachiever last year. He was not happy with the way he played. Comes out off the block, plays off another block, makes the play. He thought he played better football in 2017 than he did last year. Come back for one more year to make an impact on his game. Donald back in the slot now. Sets up next to Holinsky. Third down and eight, a big play. Helensky pressured by from behind. He threw it away just as he was going down. Yeah, I think it was Anthony Jennings was coming from one side, and I think they might have called this a sack before he got rid of the ball as well. Jennings comes off one end, has to step up from the outside to the other end. It's the Harris, the linebacker, and he cannot get off the ball. What is it? Not, was it Harris or not? Jordan Battle. Oh, it was, I'm sorry, Battle. The, the safety, the nickel safety. So. Field goal attempt. Parker White. He's three out of four so far in the year. A 44 yard attempt by Parker White, and it's right down the middle. Good looking drive stalled on third down, but South Carolina will take it, and so will their fans. The Gamecocks answer with a 44 yard field goal. Tied up 7 3 in Columbia. South Carolina in 14 plays ended in a field goal. 7 3 here at Williams Rice Stadium. And, and it also ended in a quarterback that could go to the bench feeling good about himself. Yeah. And Ryan Let's kick kickoff. Touchback out to the 25 for Alabama. Their first drive was almost flawless. Well, here's the challenge. You're going to have to stop Alabama in a lot of different ways. They've got receivers, and they use them all. They throw the slant to it does as good as anyone I've ever seen, really, in college football. And now if they get the backs out in the flat, maybe something Steve Tarkeesian is going to add more, his NFL influence to this offense. That's just another weapon that the opposing defense, it's not just saying, Sark is going to say, you don't just have to stop us, you have to stop everybody. We're going to attack with all five of our eligible players. Steve's second stint as offensive coordinator for Alabama after being with the Atlanta Falcons. Tied up below in trouble, down he goes. Javon Kinlaw. I said they were good in the middle to try to pressure the middle, and he just got home. Boy, if they could pick a guy that they would want to have a game, it's Kinlaw inside. If you can get that pressure like Quinn and Williams did last year for Alabama, that makes the rest of that defense just go, we look good out here. Keep getting them, Ken Long. We asked Traveris Robinson, the defensive coordinator, the three guys that needed to play well. He said Javon Kinlaw, Ernest Jones at linebacker, and J.C. Horn in the secondary. He's got one guy that's made a big play, and now they make another one there. Ryan Robinson, the carrier, Aaron Sterling, put him down. I also thought Ernest Jones, their true sophomore middle linebacker, who Tavares Robinson just could not say better things about. He calls him the quarterback of the defense, an instinctual player, played as a true freshman a year ago, and he's the quarterback of that defense. What do you do, though? Do you pressure Tua in this situation, or do you let him sit back? Alabama 50% of their third downs this year. They'll have to earn this one. It looks like they're going to at least fake the blitz. Let's see if they come. Third and 11. They're bringing it. Down to the low line. Going down again. R.J. Roderick from the secondary on the blitz. In the 2010 upset, 
Alabama and Greg McElroy were sacked seven times in that football game. It was the difference in the game. They never got it sorted out. That is a huge sign for this South Carolina football team. And if Roderick wouldn't have gotten the sack, Kinlaw would have yes, had his second would. of that series, and they came after the punter as well. And they got, it looks like they got a piece of it too, did they? Or he shanked it, one of the two, or it forced a bad punt. Wow, look at where they're going to spot this I thing. I know, might not even be a first down. It's going to be at the 30. That's about where they snapped it. There was enough pressure to either get the ball or force a bad kick. You see how he pulled his leg back. He never followed through, and it was either a, got a deflection or a shank. Either way, great field position for South Carolina when we come back. Some mysteries can't be explained. Don't miss the premiere of Evil Thursday, September 26th on CBS. South Carolina's got the ball at the 30-yard line after what was a 14-yard punt. And they've got a golden opportunity with two sacks on that last series alone to get points here. And remember how Alabama stopped the last drive. They had to blitz Holinsky to do it. So far, it's been two deep safeties pre-read for Alabama the whole game. That's Mills in motion. The give is to Feaster. And Feaster got about three. Brian Ray on the stop. And again, South Carolina wastes no time getting back up to the line on a second and seven. Four receivers to the right. Holinsky in trouble, and he's going down. And it's D.J. Dale, the freshman nose tackle with the sack. Well, the word was from D.J. Dale that he earned this spot, great maturity, but that he may not be as quick as Quinn and Williams, but he's so mature, big and strong. He was really not their highest rated lineman that they recruited this year. Supposedly, they had four guys better than him. Well, well that's they're not <laughs> playing as much. I know exactly. That. There's the guys. Yeah. DJ was way down there. Yeah, over here. 254th. He gets the sack and it forces long yardage for South Carolina. Third and 13. Holinsky pressured again. Had to let it go before he wanted to. It doesn't matter complete. if you're a true freshman or a sixth year senior. When you got somebody like that in your face, yeah. you're not completing passes. Get the ball, make the fake, and all of a sudden you got a big guy. A big guy, 6'7, 312. Right, and you don't even care what number 90 he is. We you know <laughs> he's a big guy. Raquan Davis with a hit on Holinsky after he let go of the ball. Parker White has already hit one today. This will be a 51 yard field goal attempt, which would be his career long if he hits it. And they fake it, and he bobbles it, one hops it. Parker White down the sideline. There's a flag down. It's probably coming back. Holding. Offense, number 84. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Fourth down. So instead of a touchdown, it'll be a putting situation. Kyle Markway, number 84. <laughs> To get the block, he's lined up right here. He's going to go down, but the hold happens downfield. Let it go. Watch it. He's out there, and then he grabs right there. Gets a yank on the play. Just a little bit of jersey. Just panicked that much. Hairline call? Wow. I think so. I don't think he even had to hold him, to tell you the truth. If he had just shoved him, he would have been okay. Will Muschamp is hot. Yeah, and, I, and that intensity is good. He has to show his players that intensity. One more look here from a different angle. Let's see if we can see a different look. Grabs the jersey and turns him a bit. I think it's a good call. I do too. Yep. What a play call, though. Wow. Just that close to being up by three. And instead, they've got to give it back to Alabama. I think we're the only two people here that think it's that call. I, I realize that they've got a big monitor here a big screen <laughs> and, we, and we've got people on both sides right. of us. They're voting the other <laughs> way. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I 
to the Charlton. Let's bring Gene in. Gene, you got an opinion on that one? Yeah, I do. And you know what, guys? Let's remember, too, when you're out on the edge like that, any minor restriction, when it's a one-on-one -on -one block that springs it, the officials need to be a little more technical in that situation as opposed to inside line play. So it is a good call because it springs the player for a touchdown. Good call, Gene. Thanks. And a good punt. Well, Alabama, instead of being trailing in the game, will have the football back leading 7-3. to three. What could have been here, huh? On the trick play. Still 7-3 tied. Felt Ness, Gary, Jamie. Yeah, Coach Collins not going to be too happy about that. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl back here with Alabama starting at the four yard line. Nice to have Gene Steratore along. It is See, because it was two to 80,000. Now it's three. Three. It's a better odds. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I like it. I really do. <laughs> two is in his own end zone to take the snap. With Najee Harris behind him, he fakes it to him, throws it out on the flat, complete to Judy. Judy makes one man miss and gets out to the 12 yard line. It'll be second down and short. Something to keep an eye on when you play Alabama. Those throws right there and catches. You can live with that. Eight, nine yards, it's hard to stop them for less than that. It's when they throw it out there for a six, seven, eight yard gain and they get 60 yards, right. 70 yards. That's when the coaches go, come on, we need more from you than that. We can't let. Missed tackles in the secondary kill us here. Judy has had three straight 100 yard games getting back to the end of last year. Second and two. Najee Harris. First down. And he takes Mukwamu to the corner with him as we check in with Jamie. Well, Gary, Jerry Judy is one of the best in terms of that, not just yards after the catch, but yards after contact. He actually said it goes back to his high school days as a defensive back, learning how to take hits and going through the body. He was a defensive back in high school because he was slotted behind Calvin and Riley Ridley as a wide receiver, so he had to go the other side of the ball, but it seems to have worked out for him on the wideout. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's doing all right. Yes. The reigning Bolitnikov winner as the top receiver in college football a year ago. Two flips it out. Najee Harris got it to the 19. And that was a swing pass all the way. All the receivers downfield were blocking on that play. Because of the pass rush and the sacks, you come back with flare pass, quick screen pass, but nothing that a quick sack is going to happen on. Everybody that time, that ball was going to Najee 100%. Najee caught four balls all of last year, and he's like the primary yes, receiver yes. today. Well, it's interesting when we talked to Nick about the coaching that they're giving Najee right now after these first two games. We'll get into it later. Meanwhile, he gets a breather, in Brian Robinson and a tailback. They fake it to him, too, with a quick slam complete. Henry runs. Here's one of those plays Gary's talking about. You can forget it. Fastest guy on the Alabama team, 81 yards, touchdown. As we said. Might be 4-1-5, might be 4-2. Coming from the outside, gets it, it's over. And look who's in front of it. Jerry Judy gets the last block. It was but that time you get the ball and that was an RPO by the way that was the decision made on the go by the quarterback to a tongue of a law. He could have handed that off or threw it. I think he made a good decision. I think he did too. Last week on the first play of the game Ruggs went on a 75 yard touchdown run. Here he goes 81 on the quick throw. Four plays 96 yards to a tongue of a law. Two touchdown passes already. 14-3, Crimson Tide. The two Alabama drives have been a minute 39 seconds and 155. One went 65 yards, one went 96. That guy capped the last one. And he's moving up the charts. Amari Cooper on top of the heap, but Judy and Ruggs are closing things up on the all-time touchdown. Receiving Mark kick with all the hands on bring it out. To the 25, and, and now we do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Mr. Daniels, they call it an RPO because you put one player in what they call a conflict. On this play, Tua is looking at this guy right there. He's the conflict player. When you make the fake, if he steps in on the fake, it's going right off his shoulder. One step, and it's over. And that's the conflict player. What do you do? Do you back up and play the slant? I mean, they are faking the ball to a running back, and you are called a linebacker. 
And as we talked, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody in doing this throw a slant better than Tua does. Tua has been pretty smart so far. Seven out of eight, 145 yards and two touchdowns. When you talk about the receivers, Gary and I have been talking about them, and there's their times and their numbers. Last year alone, those four guys caught 201 passes for almost 3,600 yards and 38 touchdowns. Here's Muse, first down. Well, they said he had special talent. And you could see it right there, making guys miss on the field. Catches the ball, easy throw. Should be tackled right there. Miss tackle. Another miss tackle. Christian Harris, the freshman, is the guy that missed the first tackle. Helinski's got all day this time. Deep middle. Got it to Brian Edwards. And another South Carolina first down at the 36. Well, Brian Edwards is the guy they need to come through. I'm sure there will be 50-50 balls later, but this time it's the deep square, and as Ness told you, plenty of time to wait on the deep, deep dig route that time. Usually you don't have that much time to throw that against Alabama. Good job by that South Carolina offensive line that time. Pick up a 27 down to the 36. You know what will come after that. They'll start blitzing. They won't let that happen too often, and here they come. Alinsky throws the out too high and take it for the other tight end, Mark Ray. Going up second and ten. And I'll tell you, right there, Xavier McKinney is counting on that pass rush, the safety, to get to Ryan Alinsky because he just squatted. If there is a way that you could keep him back in, the safeties are saying, we're going to get to him on this blitz. Empty backfield this time. Alinsky, a little roll and the throw on the run is too far out in front of his intended receiver. Josh Van, and it's going to bring up third down at 10 now. I really think this Alabama team is better at one important position. Trayvon Diggs and Patrick Sertan are maybe as good a pair as you're going to find in college football at corner. Now, LSU is going to make an argument. There's other teams. Florida is going to make an argument. But it looks like for Nick Saban, he's got his two bookend corners that he loves to have. Big third down here for South Carolina to try to at least get into field goal range. Whoops. Kalinsky just whips it out of there. Now who jumped first? Yeah. I thought Stanley was late there. There had to be some reason everybody for Alabama moves. Outside. Defense. Yeah, they all oh. move. Contact number 99. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Raquan Davis and everybody else took off. Gary said it was a whole front. Yeah, it's very odd to see like three or four guys go at the same time. Must have been a snap count. You know, yeah. Aaron Rodgers type technique right. on that one. You know, even if they don't get a first down out of this, if they don't lose yardage, that penalty might have put them in field goal range. Yeah, it puts it down, I think, right around 48, 49 yards right from here. Let's see if they try to run the ball here to try to get a little closer or go all out. Almost jumped again. Belensky can't take a sack. It's going to go deep. Double coverage, touchdown. Shy Smith, South Carolina. was pretty and mom and dad are enjoying it. I don't know if he read it right because he threw it to the guy that was double covered on the play. Shaheem Carter and Jordan Battle have him inside and out instead of being a 50 50 ball. That was like 63 37 thing had eyes. Didn't yes. It? I mean Alabama has two guys there and they win that almost jump off. But as Brad told you perfect throw. Parker White extra point is good. Hey, we got something brewing here in the first quarter. You know what they say, if you can throw, you can throw. Like in basketball, if you can shoot, you can shoot. And this guy can throw. Ryan Holinsky, last week against Charleston Southern, hit his first 12. Today, not too shabby either. 9 of 14, including a 31-yard dart to Shy Smith for the touchdown to Kappa. 75 yard South Carolina drive in six plays. South Carolina answered both touchdowns with points. Yep. And they'll bring it out to the 25. 
How about another look at this touchdown? Playing in and out coverage. The only mistake right here, Shaheem Carter turns the wrong way, and I don't know if it would have made much of a difference. Jordan Battle had a chance. Looked like he misjudged it. He goes up, and the ball's in the perfect spot. What a throw and catch. You got to give that to the offense. When you can execute like that and make that catch, you're going to gain yards. That's not a window. That's a portal. Exactly. Right there. Uh, you know, if you're Alabama, you get back and go, guys, can't cover him much closer than that. You got to play the ball. If you're the quarterback and you make a throw like that, you're on the bench going, Coach, I deserve more. And they will give him more throws now. Two touchdowns from Tagovailoa, that short punt on the first three possessions for the tie. They work from the 25. To a uh, play action, fires down the middle, and nobody home there. Jerry Judy was the closest receiver, I guess. Brings up second and ten. Brings up second and ten. At the 25. Minute 44 to go, first quarter. I don't remember the last time we did an Alabama game where the score was this close in the first quarter. <laughs> No, in the championship it was Georgia was winning this right. right. <laughs> Second down and ten, the tight end forest all in motion. The throw on the slant. What a catch by Devontae Smith. So the scouting report on these receivers are that Rux is the fastest. Judy's the best route runner. Yeah. Waddle's the most explosive. <laughs> but Vante Smith, who was injured a lot last year, has the best hands uh, as advertised. Everybody's got something, you right? You got it. As we've been talking, we talked, I don't know, was it one of the cut ins, one of the interviews we talked about? It. Does anybody remember? Anybody can help us if they want. Anyone that ever had four, a quartet like this in college ball? I remember three songs. I do too. I don't remember a quartet like this. First down at the 43. Again, the tight end on the move toward the ball. Robinson off the right side. Got it out to the 49. Oh, Robinson on the carry. And the ball was off. Final minute of the first quarter here in Columbia. And Saban has never lost to one of his former assistants. 16 and 0. Will Muschamp, one of those assistants at LSU, and then with the Miami Dolphins with Nick. Funny how you talk about all those guys that were tutored, I guess, if you want to call it that, under Nick Saban, right. and where they are now, and how they get along with the coach. They're all doing pretty <laughs> good. They're, they're all doing okay. Yeah. They're making a lot of money. Yep. Well, that didn't look right. We got flags on the play. I think Chris Owens was late on that one. Everybody else start. was off. Let's, let's take you to the chalkboard. Former assistant coaches. Eric Dooley, Jim McElwain, Mark D'Antonio, Jimbo Fisher, Mill Muschamp, Kirby Smart, Bill Napier, Jeremy Pruitt, and you see a whole bunch of zeros over there as far as the guys that have tried to beat him because when you chalk it all up, perfect 16 and 0 against his former assistants. Second down and nine. Waddle trots. Out to the top of your screen. And now we might have a timeout. And it might be the quarter. It is the end of the quarter. End of one. And it's been fun. South Carolina with Ryan Olinsky, the freshman. Najee Harris in Alabama. Two at Tagovailoa. A couple of touchdown throws. But a good one in the SEC on CBS. 14-10. Back at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. We start the second quarter. With Alabama holding a four point lead. And they work from their own 43 yard line. To a time of the law. Gets Jerry Judy in motion. He's going to actually set up in the backfield. To it. Swings it out of the flat to Robinson. Robinson ahead of steam. Inside the 40 down the sideline for South Carolina. And knocked out. But all the way to the 21 yard line. Big play there to open up the second quarter. Welcome back. Let's face it. I don't know if you and I have done a game that's been this close with Alabama. No, not, that's for sure. Except for the championship against Georgia. But what you saw right there is exactly what they want from Tua. If it's not open deep right away, come to your back and just go to him right away. Take the easy throw. 
Not every throw has to be the slant. Ball start. Linebackers Offense. Off somebody's shoulder. Number seven. And look what the five yard penalty. Produced on First down. That'll be, you know, that's been being pounded into Tua's head since the end of the uh, season last year. Right. And he produced right there. And the false start will back him up. To the 27 yard lot. That catch by Robinson of the run down the sideline only his second reception of the season. So he and Najee Harris have both been used in the passing game pretty extensively in this first half. Tiger below the RPO, the strike down the middle. The ball is out, but he didn't hold it. Devontae Smith. J.C. Horn, I think, got a hand in there. Well, if you look at these two corners, J.C. Horn and McQuamu, the two guys, Dage, the game, as J.C. Horn made the play, that would have been caught. That is a defended ball and a win by Horn on that one. Some nice shot right there at the end. Didn't know if it was a drop, but that was definitely a ball batted out. He's the guy they needed to play well in the secondary, according to the coaches, and that was a good-looking play there. Here's a quick throw, and I mean quick to Devontae Smith. Smith's got a first down, puts the brakes on, and he's knocked out of bounds around the 10 yard line. I don't think there really has been a tough throw in the game. Great decision making, great play calling, good ball handling. And look what happened there in the first drive of the second quarter. And I think he's thrown for over 200 yards in this game already. Picked up 18 more right there with a run on the catch and his first and goal at the nine. Didn't look like South Carolina was ready for the snap. Now they get it out to Ruggs on the edge, and he gets it to the five. Again, another great decision that time by Tua. He knew he had Ruggs to the outside, but he looked for a touchdown. Do I got a touchdown? Do I have anything downfield? Now watch. He knows he's got him out there to the left, but he just peeks inside. Do I have it? Nope. Take the easy throw, and again, right here, South Carolina has two players to make the tackle. They looks, get too many yards. Looks like they only had one guy even trying to push the I, I, pocket. I, I, Everybody really, was standing still. All, it was a quick snap and a well-executed play by Alabama. Second and goal at the five. Robinson steps up to Tua's right hand. He rolls that way, throws to the end zone, and is almost intercepted by J.C. Horn. Got a hand on it. Great defense by South Carolina. They were trying to play the rub play that Clemson hit against Alabama. You split out and you hit the slot in the flat, but it was defended. Watch the rub is going to come out this way, and then in the end zone is the second receiver. He just throws it short. Yep. He doesn't miss many like that. And they're going to hear the noise down there from the end zone crowd right now on third and goal at the five. Remember the success that South Carolina had, and they're going to call timeout on this play, coming with pressure after Tua. Let's see if they do it here on this call. They have sacked him twice already in the first half. Big, big third down for Alabama and the South Carolina defense when we come back. Thirteen twenty remaining in the first half. Here's the problem with blitzing down here. It's not going to be that long of a throw. It's going to happen very quickly. A lot of teams like to, you know, he plays seven guys across the line and make the quarterback make a tight throw. And when you're playing against Tua, he throws so many accurate balls. Right. You, you just wonder, should I come after him and try to get the ball out of his hand as fast as I can? I, I would go after him. Might not, you might die anyway, but I would go after him. Well, they're perfect in the red zone so far. I haven't even gotten to the red zone today because the plays were too long, but they're there now. Can they be seven for seven on touchdowns? Najee Harris will be behind Tua. Devontae Smith is to the left. The other receivers in tight on the right. And Here comes the blitz. Tua, the fade to the corner. Smith caught it, but I think he's out of bounds. He is. He caught it, though. What a snap. And you watch him in practice. They practice this all the time. They catch the ball and lift it. They don't bring it in right away. Watch him lift it, take it away. Yes, his left foot was the first thing that came down. Good call. Watch him lift the ball, 
bring it in later, but left foot out first. Talk about a highlight play that is it not was. a touchdown. It was. He got in 99% of his body, but <laughs> the left foot went down first. Well, Will Reichard missed his first two field goals and then went two for two last week. It's a 23-yard attack from the left hash, and it's up and good. Great height on that kick. 13-10 remaining. South Carolina's defense holds, but still Nick Saban's tide leads by a touchdown. Craig, can I... Back at williams Bryce Stadium where Alabama had a third and goal. Great attempt by Devontae Smith to try to haul it in in the corner, but they had to settle for the 23-yard field goal to cap a 70-yard drive and 10 plays. Our aerial coverage as you look in on williams Bryce Stadium. Sponsored by State Farm. Hey, after Robinson made the big catch down the sideline. That was a good stop by the South Carolina sure was. defense. Stay in the game. Alabama's putting up guards. A lot of passing yards. They look good, but you're in the game. Stay in the game. Get it to the fourth quarter. Keep the fans here. Let the pressure shift to Alabama. That's the whole thing that South Carolina's thinking in this game. Alabama still has put it away as fast as we can. <laughs> it's not working for them today so far. Riker, the freshman from Hoover, Alabama, with the kick. And it's a dandy. Bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now let's test your knowledge with today's and our season's first half lag trivia half question, which is which three SEC East schools have defeated Alabama under Nick Saban? Well, we cheated a little bit by telling you about the big upset nine years ago here in Columbia, so you got one of them. We'll get the other two for you and give you time to think it over. South Carolina from the 25. David Feaster in the backfield behind Ryan Olinsky, who's looked good today. The freshman out of Orange, California. Play fake. Little half bootleg, and he is here and out. Just overshot Brian Edwards. Edwards had a step back there on Trayvon Diggs. That's the challenge. When you play Alabama, they're going to play bump and run coverage. They're going to give you those opportunities. If you can complete that ball 30 yards downfield, you got a chance. Now, this is a good throw. This is probably a B plus throw. Needs to be an A minus throw. <laughs> he had a yard and a half. He's open, but it's not wide open. It forces you to throw an accurate ball down the field. They're going to blitz up the middle. Quick slant. This one's tense. Out of the hands of Shy Smith. Did it for Shy good throw too, but Incomplete. Jared Maiden got a hit on him from behind, I think it was. And it brings up third down at Timmy. Shy Smith had a pretty good game when we watched that Clemson game on tape last year. He had nine catches for 109 yards. Had a good catch already today. Right got close. the tight end out the flat across the 30, trying to stretch it out. He got it to the 32. Kyle Markway, and a half, maybe. Maybe. Xavier McKinney. Made the tackle. Just amazing watching these young quarterbacks, these true freshman quarterbacks. We saw it, you know, Trevor Lawrence, Jake Fromm, yep. you know, Jalen Hurts, Tua. They all seem so ready to play. The offense that they ran in high school is the offense they're running now. The split section uh, decisions they're making almost feel like it's second nature to them. And Ryan Walensky hasn't been under center yet, has he? It's all been no, shotgun. No, you're right. Well, you're right. Joseph Charlton to punt. And a dangerous man that you don't want to put it in his hands on an easy kick. Here's a flag down on the punt. Waddle will backpedal and let it go. Well, if the flag's not in South Carolina, they don't let it get to the end zone. They're in good shape. But let's wait and see. It looked like the linesman made the call. So it's either a legal formation or perhaps Alabama lined up in the neutral zone. Well, if Alabama lined up in the neutral zone, it's first down. That's exactly right. And if not, it's a 66-yard punt if it's looking, not a penalty. He's looking towards Alabama. They can't decline that. They'll push it back and make a punt again. Again, Hubert Owens will <laughs> let us know. It was a legal procedure, some kind illegal of motion. Illegal yep. motion on the offense. Number 28 was in motion that never got set. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Result of the penalty is a first down. Think about the two huge special team plays so far in this game. Fake field goal. It could have been a touchdown. And right here, a punt that goes down to the one-yard line. 
let's see where that ends up on this play. No, it's a, it's really, instead, of, it's not a five yard penalty until the play ends. Remember, they had it on the two. Let's see where the ball ends up. That's the real penalty distance. Let's see, at least hits it to the six yard line. It's going to be not a 66 yard kick, I can tell you that. Still got guys running across the formation of the point. Now he back Waddle up pretty good again, but not nearly as far to the 17 yard line. And Waddle coming back the other way. And it's a big difference. They got it at the 35 or 36 yard line of the punt return. So those are 33 hidden yards that nobody ever talks about. Well, we just did. 11:52 <laughs> till halftime. This fall, LA's newest Superior Court judge is changing the system one case at a time. The new drama All Rise premieres Monday, September 23rd on CBS. Most of the fans were rising on that punt return, Gary. Yeah, we heard a little mur murmur, and we might have found out why. Right here, a rating Slate Bolden gets grabbed that everyone saw except for the officials. <laughs> okay, now remember the hold on the other play for the touchdown for South Carolina. This would have brought it back to the 10 yard line, half right. the distance. So that's a big difference in this play. Waddle got 18 yards on the return. It would have gone the other way, like Gary said, and the starting field position would not have been for two at the below of the 35 yeah, yard think, line, yeah, which is he, where it is now. I think he caught it around the 20, so that would have gone back. Yep. And right now, too, so I don't care where we start. If I get the throw, I feel good. Doesn't matter. At the 35. The quick throw out the flat to Rose, and South Carolina is all over that one. Nice play by Sherrod Green. Sherrod Green was the number two tackler for this team. 13 games he started for a team that was decimated by injuries in the defensive line. He and T.J. Brunson had to make a ton of tackles last year. You can see that time he comes up, makes the play. Yep. He and T.J. had 179 tackles between the two of them a year ago. Loss on the play. Second down of 13. Najee Harris flushes out of the now empty Alabama backfield. Time to lower. Has time over the middle. Calmly throws to Rugs, who's dropped by Jamie Robinson. Uh, Jamie Robinson out at the 37, but it still brings up third down. Good job by South Carolina. Even though Alabama's going hurry up, South Carolina's ahead of the substitution, and they get fresh pass rushers in the game. A couple of third and longs today, and they're only one for five. Third and eight. Same look with the two guys inside of the A gap, they call it, right on the center. Time to the lower. On the slant, it's complete. It's a first down, and it's out to midfield. Devontae Smith's been a big target, number six today. So the question is about the offensive line. That's been the area that they've been struggling with. Can they pick up this stunt? Yes. Nice pass off that time. Get a free rusher, but it's not quick enough when you're throwing the slant. If you don't slow them down right away, they're going to get it off. And that's one of the advantages, by the way, of the shotgun. Back when I played, you took that ball under center, and you couldn't get away from those inside rushers. From the shotgun, you have that ability, even when a guy comes free, to throw that slant. Devontae Smith already caught five passes. Here's Najee Harris straight up the middle and almost four for him. Now, so let's talk a little bit about Najee Harris, a five-star recruit, had to wait his turn. He was playing, you know, as the third back. He gets six, seven, eight carries. And Coach Saban told us he thought he was, when he had his opportunities, was trying to do too much. Yep. Trying to prove to everybody what a five-star he was. And they've been talking to him about pressing the hole and making sure that his linemen know where he's coming from. Follow your blocks, not necessarily freelancing. This time he tried to bounce it out for a couple. And a good play by J.C. Horn who came up in the secondary and got the first piece of it. And you can almost understand it. You know, you, you only get so many opportunities. You want to show what you can do. And then you get out there, the coaching they're trying to give him is, if you go into the hole, the defenders will come to the linemen where they anticipate them, and it'll make those blocks easier. Well, they picked up the last third down when it was third and eight. Third and three here. Under nine to go, first half. 
Alabama by a touchdown. See, this is too short to blitz here. They should go some type of combo coverages. Forrest all the tight end. Again, motions toward the middle of the pack. Najee Harris, and he's brought down to the line of scrimmage by R.J. Roderick, his second big play of the game. Three straight runs, three straight defended plays by South Carolina. When they brought number 87, Forrestal, in, and added the extra man to the box, and that's the guy who made the tackle. The punting team came over by Nick Saban, and he said, uh-uh. There's no hurry here. Whether you punt from the 42 or the 48, it's the big, same thing. Let's see if they go for it or bluff it. Fourth down and three. They're free for three on fourth down conversions this year. They're going. Hagadaloa all day to throw. Crossing route, Najee Harris inside the 30, broke a tackle. A hurdle and the sideline and a touchdown. What a catch and run for the guy we just talked about. 42 yards for Najee Harris. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Comes out of the backfield and he's going to circle. Jerry Judy's going to come over here and get a block. But watch what he does after the catch. Not enough pressure. Plenty of time. Catches it. First thing is shove him out of the way. You get a shove and a hurdle. That's always good on an implant. Rodgers' extra point is good. So much happened we didn't have time to show it. <laughs> A two touchdown lead now for Alabama on fourth down. Najee Harris on a pass from Tua Tagovailoa on a crossing route. First, as Gary said, run somebody over. Then hurdle the next guy. And then drag the linebacker for a couple of yards for the touchdown. We got a new category now, Ness. If there's so much that happens, you don't have time to show it. That's a good play. <laughs> Watch what Najee does first. He's going to pick for Devontae Smith, number one. He's coming out. He's going to pick to see if he can get Devontae Smith going the other way on the play. Watch. I'm going to pick. Nope. Then the next thing he does, he got to catch the ball. And he catches it. Then he knocks out DJ Wano. That guy's 6'5", 260. Then he jumps, and then he breaks the tackle for the middle linebacker and goes in the end zone. Not even enough time to show it all. He's got one less catch in the first half than he had all of last year. And a touchback. South Carolina needs an answer now. They were playing nose to nose with Alabama until that explosive play on fourth down. A pretty good day for Najee in the first half. 93 total yards. Two receiving touchdowns, first ever. First and second ever, I should say. And Tua, by the way, is 15 out of 20 for 276 yards and three touchdowns with no interceptions. All right, you knew this. If you're South Carolina, you knew your defense has got a tough job. You got to score points. You get a field goal here, but you got to take it. You just got to concentrate on your job. Here's a quick throw to use the tight end. And he goes for about six. Nice job again. At the seven and a half minute mark, Jared Maiden brought it down. All three receivers, including Muse, the tight end, up to the top. But Brian Edwards to the left. Got a second and four. Draw play. I haven't seen one of those yet today, and it didn't work because Raquan Davis said, I got this. Raquan Davis looks quicker than he did at any time last year. The only reason it may be that way is Quinn and Williams are so quick, he maybe he looks slow <laughs> next time. <laughs> That's true. He's probably happy Quinn and left. Yeah, so I look a lot better on Quinn, I got a chance to make some tackles now. <laughs> Donald in motion out of the backfield. And a quick throw and a quick hit by Xavier McKinney. And those two have a couple of words to say. So punting situation coming up for South Carolina. Xavier McKenney's putting on a show here, really is. isn't he? Came in as a leading tackler, and I think he might go home as a leading tackler. Yeah, I mean, 
and from that safety position and he stays healthy it's going to be important when you lose two inside linebackers especially Dylan Moses your quarterback your safety has to be that Mika Fitzpatrick type player and so far he's doing that for him. Here's another fake on an end around on the punt fake and they're not going to get it. Alabama stops at Shai Smith on a toss sweep on the end around on a fake punt. So South Carolina pulling out all the stops, but this one is stopped. Got to stay home. Your job is to stay home. Stays home, and he's able to turn it back in with a help bar and make the play. You see Will Muschamp. He said we needed to steal a possession. It's a gamble. He didn't steal this one. He had that other chance with that fake field goal. That's right. But this time, it may blow up in his face. Well, it gives Alabama's offense a ball at the 32-yard line. Short field for Tua. And company with a two touchdown lead at the six minute mark. Now we asked you the Aflac trivia question a little earlier to test your knowledge. It was who are the SEC East teams that have beaten Alabama under Nick Saban? Georgia in seven, Florida in 2008, and South Carolina in the flashback we had nine years ago, right here in Columbia. Tagabaloa. Waddles out in the flat. He's going for Judy. Uh, and flags it. come in. J.C. Horns going to be caught with either pass interference or holding. Did he get a tug before he put his hands up in the air? He knew he slowed down Judy. Judy knew he had his knew he had his uh, speed taken away from him. Let's see what happened. Horn on Judy. Bumps him, slows Pass his potential the down, and that's what defense called. number 20. No doubt. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. He actually anticipated it so much he was there with his body. He more was than too it, quick. Exactly. He didn't really grab him. He ran into him. So first down, right at the start of the red zone for Alabama at the 20-yard line. They're going two tight ends right now. Let's see if they give it to Brian Robinson or if Tuza's just going to keep slinging it. Robinson cuts it off tackle. And he's got five. And J.C. Horn and Jerry Judy going at it. That was a late call by the umpire in the backfield that time. Usually he can see a holding from back there. That's his job. That's the matchup that South Carolina Personal wanted foul. when they could get Face mask. Offense, number 87. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. A little forest all. The clock never. With the face mask. So that backs it up outside the 30 uh, As he to tried, the 35. He tried to get his block. It went up on the defender's face mask, and the umpire sold it. Forrest is right there. Right at the end. Almost was the other way. We see that one more time. Forrestal got that face mask hand in his first, and then he kind of counterpunched and he got caught. So first and 25, as Gary says, Tua just says, okay, I got more room to work. Gonna throw it out in the flat to Waddle with a head of steam. And Horn brings it down. And again, Horn and Judy are jawing down there. Yep. It's funny what uh, Will Muschamp told his players. The first tape that the NFL scouts are going to put on is when you play against Alabama. So go out there and compete. Because I'll tell you, if I was a scout, wouldn't you want to see J.C. Horn matched up against a future NFL player? Said he talked to Steve Spurrier about that. Steve said, I used to tell my Florida guys that. You want to show off, show off against the best. Five minutes remaining. And settles in a slot. Top of the low low, looking for more. Steps up over the middle. High throw incomplete intended for Tennyson, the tight end. JT Day broke it up. And there's Will as an assistant with Nick at LSU. And then on 2005, the Miami Dolphins. And now here they are head to head in Columbia. Third down and 20. And be a 47 yard field goal right here. Now, this would be a chance. Do you dare blitz and push them back? Because when you bring people more, then you put your guys in man to man coverage. Four wideouts for number 13. 
three man rush. Tagovailoa has time, goes short over the middle, but he gets it to Najee Harris, who already has two touchdowns today. He got it to the 20, maybe the 19, well short of the first down, but it does give Will Record a lot better shot at the field goal. See, Will did not, I mean, excuse me, Tua did not do that last year. He would look for that first down throw. He'd hang in the pocket, he'd spin around and try to make that play downfield. This time, he's going, nope, I'm going to take this throw right here. If it's a field goal, it's three points. It's a positive play for our team. Record is hit from 23 earlier. He hit his last two a couple of weeks ago from 48 and 49 against New Mexico State. This will be a 37 yard field goal attempt, and he pushed it left. from 37. That gives South Carolina a little bit of life with 406 remaining in the half. <laughs> Alabama's had some problems with missed field goals. They got a five star kicker who just missed one from 37 and Will Muschamp says I don't like it. All right Zuck thanks two touchdown lead for Alabama but a missed field goal. And that gives Ryan Holinsky an opportunity. And Gary's looked pretty, pretty poised again today. He has. You know, there have been games when I've seen young quarterbacks or old quarterbacks play against Alabama and say they're not good enough. They don't have a chance. And as we thought in the open, I did not think he'd be the reason if they don't win the game. And I think that's been correct so far. He's playing good enough. But this time right here is the key part. This is their chance for South Carolina to get back in the game. Their four minute offense. I don't know if Alabama jumped. He's going to loft one. I think he's got a free player. Thinks he does. And the catch is made by Edwards. There may be a lot here. I think Alabama jumped off. I wonder did they rough the quarterback. Well it's in the backfield not at the line of scrimmage. The first one went on it's on the 20 yard line and the other one's in the backfield. They could put both of these here. 20 yard penalty. Offside defense. Penalties decline. Personal foul. Rough of the passer defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Okay, so Gary was right on both counts. A jump in the middle as you're going to see right there. Inside. Yep. Free play. He knows he has it. I think it was Phil Mathis at jump number 48 and then here comes the late hit. Yeah, there's no way he saw but you are responsible for your body. No way he saw the ball being gone but the ball was gone. It's a good good call. Anthony Jennings with the roughing the passer penalty. Give South Carolina. That's it. Right right Jennings just jumped oh, again. Yeah, that didn't hit that. And they throw it out again to Edwards. But did a flag go down on that one. Maybe not. I thought he was offside again. If there is one, I don't see it, but the officials are having a. Yeah, you know, we're looking at each other, and they're All looking at each other. Offense, number 50, five yard penalty, first down. All right, so we're going to dozy do back and forth yeah. here. That's one of those really tough penalties when they don't even throw a flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you can see it on the left tackle. <laughs> All right, I got you. I mean, it was obvious, but I mean, maybe he couldn't find it. Yeah. You know? Well, Sidarius Hutchinson has gained about 100 pounds since he got on campus, and you get that 320 backing up, and it's hard to slow down. Yep. There's the numbers on Ryan Holinsky. Back just outside the 30. Throws high a little bit. Complete and quick hit by Jason Carter to make the stop. Carter for Alabama on the. So the reason this is so big, they just had previously two three and outs. One of them touchdown Najee Harris. That one they got out alive. You know, the missed field goal. They got out, they stopped the drive, they got out alive. Now they got to put tight points on the board right here. Three minutes to go, they get the ball to start the second half. A chance to get back in the game. Kalinsky waits. Steps up, goes across the middle, hit his receiver, Muse, and he dropped it. Would have been a first down. Sure would. There's another flag. <laughs> on the far side, the, the line of scrimmage. Flag is on the play. I'm not sure they didn't have a receiver in motion. Defense, number eight. Five yard penalty, second down. They get five back. Now, right in front of the official, Harris is out there with a running back on the play and must have held the. Oh, I think he must have lined up offsides. That's what it was. The, the running back was off the ball and he was up there in bump and rough position, so he lined up offsides. <laughs> <laughs> 
Second down and seven. They keep it on the ground to Feaster. And Tavian gets out to 40 as we're approaching the three minute mark. So if you're Brian McClendon right here, you're also looking at this situation. You want points, but boy, if you give the ball back to two with you know two minutes to go, you might be in trouble as well. Exactly. There's Brian. The Georgia assistant and former running back there. Big third down. They're only converted one so far. Third and four. Brian Edwards in motion. Alinsky looks that way, throws that way, caught that way, but I don't know where the forward progress is going to come here. That's going to be key. There was no Whoa, right there. That's I, a first down. I thought he had it across the line when he caught the ball. That is a huge converted third down. Man to man coverage. Trayvon Diggs, right? Yes, he caught the ball just at the line. There was no official down the line. He kind of had to guess a bit on the play, but close enough. There's a little pitch. Edwards. Ooh, took a big Ooh. hit. He's still going. And the pile's still going. First down, South Carolina. Got to bring your arms. Jared Maiden, number 21 that time, went for a knockout blow. But he did not bring his arms on the tackle. Watch, coming up from the secondary. Brian Edwards going to deliver one of his own. Boom. Boom, look at him. He throws it, but he does not bring his arms. Wrap it up. The bad news is he lost his helmet, so he's out for this play. He's going to take one off. Goes down on one knee to get a breather. Meanwhile, his teammates out there with a the first down at the Alabama 44-yard line. Draw play. Feaster hesitates. And now brings it forward. Nice run. Feaster to the 38 yard line with two minutes to go in the half. And boy, do you feel better now calling plays? You're across the 50 yard line, the clock's under two minutes, you're moving the football. Now you say, I can call anything I want here right now. Feaster comes out, Rico Dottle goes in. Kalinsky fakes it out to Dottle and fires far side. Overshot his intended receiver, Shy Smith. Oh, well, that's nothing. Ball is out there. Defender just backing into the receiver. Insignificant. Backing up on the ball. He has a right to go for the ball. Ball's way out of bounds. No chance. And the cheerleader had a shot at it. She had her back turn. Pretty plucky guy, isn't he right there? Hansky? Don't play like a freshman. Nope. Here's the Jake, Jalen Hurts, Tua, Trevor Lawrence. They're all they grow up in a hurry. Yes. <laughs> Third down at four. This is not exactly comfortable field goal range. It's last time. Will they do it this time? Yes. Alinsky waits. Five is complete inside the 30 with a first down. You know who's going to smile at these throws is the old ball coach. Steve Spurrier loved the hook pass. Get out there and post up your guy. I even saw him do it in the AAF this year. Go out there. That's the best beater he thinks he believes. Alinsky comes up throw complete. Rico Donald, Donald fighting for extra yardage and a first down around the 18 yard line. Rico Donald is one guy that would love to have a big game. He had a big drop at the beginning of last year's game, went off his shoulder pads. Deontay Baker scores a touchdown. He's out to show what he has today. Good start. At the 18 with a minute 24. 39 yard drive so far. Ryan Olinsky has been dead on. Five out of six. He's got a guy in his face, and he still threw it to the tight end. Another first down, and it's inside the five to Kyle Markway. How about the patience that Olinsky had that time? He knew he had a free rusher coming right at him, and he waited, and he waited, and threw it at the last second to Markway. What a play, and Markway makes another five or six yards after the catch. Plenty of time to work here. As we approach a minute, South Carolina's got two timeouts remaining. First and goal for the Gamecocks at the Alabama four. Time is not a factor at as, as all a factor. Over two timeouts. 55 seconds to go. Nice drive. Full house backfield. Hand up, down. Touchdown. Check his knees. It's close. 
Check his knees. I think they called it short by an inch. They did. And the clock is still going, by the way. He stretches. Boy, one hit first. The ball in the end zone his knees. They're going to spark. Put it at the one foot line. The throw in the corner, trying to get it to the tight end. And I'm two of them shocked down. That, that the clock wasn't stopped. I'm shocked the replay official didn't stop the game to see if his knee was down. That was close. Now they burned another down. Once you go by the play, you can't go back. I'm shocked the replay for I know. I don't now think remember, his knees ever touched. I'll I be honest with you. I don't know. I don't, He's airborne right there. I, I just say that deserved a better look. Did it come down or not? Boy, at that look, I would say it didn't. And now timeout taken with 19 seconds to go. South Carolina. Well, there's already been a play run, so you can't that, go back. That is really frustrating for a coach. When you got, now listen, we all know that the replay official is looking at every play anyway. Right. But on that one, gee, the enormity of that call, I wonder what Gene has to say about that one. Would he have stopped that clock? What do you got, Gene? I think in this situation, as you guys have alluded to, it's just too close not to look at it. Right. Right? I mean, it, it appears that the right knee makes contact with the ground, but, you know, we don't see really anything that no dirt pops up or anything. Exactly. So does he just miss it now? Do I think that they can overturn that if they look in replay? That's a tall ask, but just the fact of stopping it to look because it is so close, I would expect that they would have done that. You could see the ball of his right foot push at the last instant, like maybe there was still air under that right knee, and then he just tried to get airborne as quickly as he could. Let's see if we can get a better look. The, the more we go, the fuzzier it gets, doesn't it, though? But I, it's close either way, but I get your point. I get your point. Well, maybe they'll score a touchdown and it won't matter. And they didn't. Bottled snap, but now it's fourth down. And the clock is running again. Yeah, they got a timeout, though. No, but now what do you do? Do you take three points? Or do you take the bigger picture and say, three eight and Carolina. these guys? Wow. Big decision. For Will Muschamp. I will agree with Gene on one thing. Because it was called short, I don't know if there was enough to overturn it. If it would have been a call to touchdown, I think it would have stood the other way, too. And then the last play was a little bit of a train wreck. Yeah, that's the first snap under center of the game, and they fumble it. Yeah, they don't know how to do it. <laughs> don't know he hasn't that. taken one all day until this right exactly. there. Exactly. And we talked to Stanley yesterday, and we go, how often do you do it? He said, we practice it, but it's different. And I said, you know what the toughest one is? In short yardage and goal line. And he goes, yeah, we never go live for that quarterback center exchange. Yeah, he's talking about Donnell Stanley, the captain of the six-year senior center. Remember, South Carolina gets the ball to start the second half. I thought that may influence this to kick three and get the ball again, but they're going to go for it. Fourth and goal at the three-yard line. Polanski rolls, throws, two high incomplete. One second left in the half. Oh, maybe the time has expired now. It's the Clemson play again, but this time, watch Alabama pass everybody off. There's a defender out there. He wants to throw it to the outside, but that time, it's defended by a zone. He has nowhere to go but the back, and he makes too high of a throw. He could have had it. Would have taken about a foot lower throw. What could have been a couple of times for South Carolina. A fake field goal with a hole going for fourth down at the end of the half. When they maybe could have had three, as it is, they're still within two touchdowns of Alabama, 24 to 10. Don't forget, Zuck, Rick, and BJ will have first half analysis, scores, and highlights from around the country in the Geico halftime report, which is just around the corner. In Columbia, South Carolina, let's go down to Jamie. Coach, why did you handle that touchdown that was not called one there when the replay official did not stop I'm the game? I'm not going to comment on that. I'll get fined for the rest of my life if I get commented on that. 
How do you feel like Ryan Holinsky handled himself? He's doing a great job. Thanks, Coach. Uh, not a happy coach right there. He and also knows you get two questions. That's it. You get two. <laughs> I'm out of here. Two questions and four-letter answers. <laughs> <laughs> 24 to 10, halftime in Columbia as we head to Andy Harris. Two touchdowns and receptions today in the first half. And as we're just about set to start the third quarter at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, two touchdown lead for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, 24 to 10. Alabama to kick. Rikers kick. Maybe fielded out the three yard line. And it is the aforementioned Shy Smith on the return, a short return at that. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Jamie's down on the sideline. I know this is so much how Alabama's playing, but what could have been for South Carolina? A couple of blown plays, and then I don't get it at the end of the half when they have a couple timeouts and there's. Apparently, replay official John Bible thought it was going to be too close to call no matter what. In his mind, I think he's thinking here, I won't be able to tell, so why stop the clock? I thought it would deserve another look. It's such a big play. Now, the other part of it is, as you look at that, Will Muschamp had two, had two timeouts, and he decided to go hurry up instead of bleeding it down, giving the replay official more time to take a the timeout. Snap. And then they fumble the snap. Yeah. Exactly. Rough so it's not half. it's not so much Alabama had a goal line stand they had a goal line survive yeah, basically. Exactly. Right and now we're set for the start of the third quarter and Ryan Olinsky and all the fans at Williams Rice Stadium with the three fingers up in honor of his late brother Tyler and on a first play number five Rico Dowdle blasts his way down to the 40 and maybe the 41. Twenty two yard pickup by Rico Dowdle. Yeah, neither team in the first half could run the ball at all. Alabama with only twenty six yards rushing. South Carolina now not closing in on fifty total. It's been a passing game for both teams. Now they come right back to the tight end for nine more and Mark Wegg. And we have a flag down. Legal substitution. substitution infraction on the defense number eight did not get off the field in time 12 on the field declined their penalty result of the play is the second down so that's the second time one of the freshman starters on that inside either the defensive line or the linebacking core has not gotten off the field in time it was DJ Dale the nose tackle early not Christian Harris the linebacker and here's South Carolina at midfield in a hurry He has shown toughness throughout the whole football game, fighting for footballs, and after he gets the football, fighting through plays. And I think that time, that might have been a shoulder injury on a reach out that time by one of the defensive linemen. Was it Big Roquan Davis? Yeah, it, it is. is. 99. He was in pursuit, and he got a piece of an arm tackle, and then yeah. he sort of leg whipped one of his own guys, I think, in the pile I, up. I, I think it was his shoulder, though, Brad. When he reached out with that left arm, Davis almost ran right through it. Right there, see how he reach, yeah, reach out, and he goes down on the shoulder. I don't even know which shoulder it was, but I know he reached out and he ran right through that kind of a one-arm tackle right there. There's a look, better look. And then he falls on his right shoulder, so we don't know if it was left one or his right one. <laughs> Something hurts. Yes, but how about that? Your wide receiver running through on a tackle by the defensive lineman. Now remember. Roquan is playing off his offensive lineman and trying to stick out his other arm to make the play. That's his job. South Carolina already at the Alabama 40. Rico Dowdle running strong, almost got a face mask in there too at the end. He's got nine. The game trends from the first half. Tua, fourth time he's at 250 yards or more in the first half passing. Holinsky. The Alabama running backs have done a lot of receiving today. Helensky will throw it out in the flat to his safety valve. That is down. And he dives forward. He's close, but he's short. Patrick Sertan was out there covering in the flat. 
So Ryan Alinsky on this play looks for his coverage. What do I got downfield? He knows he's got the back to the left. Turns and throws. He doesn't even look over there. That's the quarterback decision. Oh, back under center again. And there go the quarterback sneak, and this time he does hold on to the snap. And that's what they were trying near the goal line and did not catch the snap. So this is exactly what Will Muschamp and the doctor ordered for South Carolina to open up the third quarter. Well, they got to come away with points on this drive. Well, Will has been willing to gamble in this game. A fake field goal, a fake punt, went for it on fourth and goal. Nothing's really hurt. He survived. They didn't make it, but he survived them all, except he could have had three points. So he played three points for four big decisions. Walensky throws, got his man at Shy Smith inside the 10 to the 9. Anthony Jennings, number 33, is right into Holinsky's face. And in that situation, that's when you want to throw off your back foot. He buy a little time, he lay the ball up, and throw it. Here's the end around, Ortre Smith. He got to the five. His second down and goal. Remember this South Carolina offense. Jake Bentley threw for over 500 yards against Clemson at the end of the year last year. They've been able to move the ball. They've never put it together against the big teams together. You know, yeah. offense, defense, they're really in this football game. Prior to that misfire at the end of the half, they had been perfect in the red zone as far as at least scoring something. They've got it second and goal at the five here, just inside the five. Here's Edwards, and he's going down. This time it is smelled out defensively by Sorrell Lewis. Sorrell Lewis, we haven't called his number much, but this time his job is to jet sweep, and he closes on it fast. Six foot five. We've heard, you know, tough injuries he's had to play through for two years right here and couldn't get in the lineup, but they say he's ready this year. If he's ready and plays the way they think he can, he could be a difference maker on the edge for Alabama. Well, there you see in the nine trips, six touchdowns, a couple of field goals. Now they're backed up, though, to the 10 yard line. Valensky's going to have to call timeout. So we'll see what they do on third down and goal after this timeout. We'll be right back. From executive producer Chuck Lorre comes a love story made in America. Catch the original comedy Bob Hart's Abishola premieres Monday, September 23rd on CBS. It is third down and goal. South Carolina having taken a timeout. The ball at the 10 yard line. This is the opening drive of the third quarter. Past history is this is not a blitz down for Alabama. They like to play their matchup zone down here and force everything in front of them, conceding a field goal if they don't make it to the line. Three wideouts to Ryan Olinsky's left. He's looking that way right now. And then it's Brian Edwards, the senior, who's been big today, down to the bottom of the screen, set up against Trayvon Diggs. Alabama's in with their dime look. Xavier McKinney is playing that, Mike, that linebacker spot right there. That's Mews in motion to the slot. Olinsky. Chase so is Jennings and it's a one hopper intended for Feaster incomplete. Shane Lee, number 35, was in coverage. Going the other direction. McKinney had the other crossing route, crossing route this way, crossing route the other way, and Shane Lee takes him. Basically the same play that Najee Davenport scored on uh, for Alabama. Good coverage, would have taken a perfect throw, it was not. Now it's Parker White. All your decisions as a head coach have consequences. When you don't take three at the end of the half, you get three here, you get eight point game instead of right now, what you have, 11 point game. So be a 28 this. yard field goal. And it's up and good. So Parker White gets South Carolina that much closer with 11 26 remaining in the third quarter. But as Gary said, could have been tighter than it is right now, 24 13. Carolina had a third and goal at the one and got no points. This past drive, they had second and goal at the five and had to settle for three. Well, to have that three more back, like you said here. Yep. And it's Alabama offense. I hope they warmed up well because they didn't have the ball the last four minutes, then halftime, and then that for about an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Will Tommy to kick. And the line drive will bring it out on the touchback to the 25 as we check in with Jamie. Well, Brad, Alabama must take their time on offense here because they have a couple of issues and injuries going on on the defensive side of the ball. We saw Raekwon Davis go down on the kickoff at half. He is questionable to return with an upper extremity injury. On the other side of the defensive end line, LeBrian Ray is out for the game with a lower leg injury. And also uh, Terrell Davis, the linebacker, was Terrell Lewis, excuse me, was on the bike just now talking to the medical staff. Wow, so there goes uh, their Jeez. veterans on the front line and one of their veteran linebackers. Yeah, three, and he's basically that punt position where he plays defensive end linebackers. So really three defensive linemen are pass rushers off the edge. Alabama first down, two a got a low snap, a play fake. Throws off his back foot in and out of the hands of Devontae Smith. I think the low snap caused that play to disintegrate really quickly. First half, Alabama possessions and a bad front and a missed field goal. Other than that, it's kind of a normal Alabama offense. Yep. Those four play drives kill you unless it ends in a TD. <laughs> <laughs> if it ends in a kick and yes. it's an extra point or a field goal. <laughs> Smith in motion behind Pimero and he throws it out to him. Nice play. A play out to the 30, but a nice defensive play as well. That was Jamie Robinson, I think, that made the open field stop. Number seven, watch him. He's getting blocked. He's getting held. That was one that was missed. True the South question. Carolina fans have been complaining, and that one right there should have been called. 35. Time of all rolls, throws, runs on the receiver again. First down. With the tackle. Oh, almost to midfield. Sprint out. It's one of those plays. It's all the way up the, up the outside. One man play again. A perfect throw on the run by two to the outside. That puts Rugs over 100 receiving with Devontae Smith with 83. Look at that balance. You know it's funny. All the receivers are fast, but they all point to Rugs and go, no, 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 we're not as fast as him. <laughs> they just concede it, don't they? Yeah. First down. Straight ahead run. A little hesitation by Najee Harris, and then he just explodes for almost a dozen. And again at halftime, they did a lot. You know, they have over 300 yards, roughly 300 yards in offense. But if you look at the stats, and you run for 25 yards. What Nick Saban says, that's eventually going to catch up with us. And he wants more balance out of his football team. Now that was a big hole, but he followed his blockers there, that's for sure. For a first down at the 42. Throw complete behind Devontae Smith. He still made the catch, and he is gone. Touchdown, Alabama. Number four for Tua, 42 yards to Smith, and he's over 100 yards receiving. Well, eBay, number 29, and a chance to save the play. You're going to get the RPO, the slant. It's going to be a good play, but the missed tackle put the extra yards on there for the touchdown. Eighth career game with four or more touchdowns through the air. He'll hold for the extra point. I always get the feeling Tua walks over there and goes, we don't know, need no stink in that game. <laughs> That's a run game right there. Gave it to him just a little bit downfield. That's, That's right. All. Extra point is good. Well, a quick drive again. Under two minutes again. Five plays. 75 yards in a minute 35. There's another look. Right in his face, he makes that throw half a step behind, and then Smith just sidesteps the last tackler. He knows he's good. Remember, he's a great slant thrower. When he turns, that ball's right there. The wide receivers of Alabama continue to light it up. 31-13, tied. Well, hey, Jim McCarron, you're Record is precarious at best. To a talk of low four touchdown passes today. And his pass, Jalen Hurts, who's now the starting quarterback at Oklahoma, is putting up huge numbers in his own right. And to a 350 through the air, 19 out of 26, four touchdowns, no interceptions so far today. The kick to the goal line to Shai Smith. Shai is in trouble on these kick returns. Gary said you got to keep running fast. Yeah, Don't hesitate at the 13. 
You want to know why it's so hard to play defense nowadays? It's the rule that's been expanded. Watch right guard Dickerson and left tackle right here on this play. When the ball is thrown, Dickerson is three yards downfield. He's legal, but he's three yards downfield, one yard downfield. But if you're trying to read this as a defense, how do you deal with that? When that ball comes out of the quarterback's hands, the NFL rule is one yard downfield. College rule is three yards, and that's why, that's why even the Nick Saban defenses, everyone's defense is having troubles slowing these offenses down in college football. Rayquan Davis is back in defensively, trying to put some pressure on Helensky, who throws across the middle, high and behind Josh Van. Rayquan, who, as Jamie said, upper extremity injury, but he apparently is ready to go anyway. Ears count. <laughs> no, is that, it's just arm. Yeah, everything above the waist. Why don't they just say arms? What other extremity is there above the waist? <laughs> Second down. <laughs> Here's a draw play. They tried this a few times. Feaster got three or four out of it. Anthony Jennings made the stop. And now it's a third down at the nine and a half minute mark. Down 18. They need to keep this thing going. A sustained drive and more points just to try to stay close. Get Alabama to the fourth quarter. That throw is complete. And it is a first down. And a spin move by Sean Smith. And he's got a first down. Out across the 35. I would not want to be in the coach's room when Shaheem Carter hears the coaching from the coach. Holy cap. Gets turned around. He's got outside technique, help inside, and lets the receiver go right across his face. I was going to say, yeah, but coach, I made the tackle. Yes, you did. <laughs> for a first down. <laughs> the defense is put together to know where your help is. Shaheem Carter knew he had help inside. You can't get beat outside. The That's your job. The carry on joiner, who's the backup quarterback, is in the lineup as a wide receiver. They try to throw a slant to him. Knocked down by Shaheen Carter. He was. Kick. When you don't cover well, you rush. Shaheen Carter's off the corner this time. Throws right into it. And almost, that's a batted ball that could have gone the other way. I'd like to get the ball in the hands of number seven, even though he's now the backup quarterback with Jake Bentley out for the season and Holinsky the starter. But they're going to play him in some different spots. As we go down, a little hesitation. Nice run off the left side. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, after that touchdown, Henry Ruggs pulled up a little bit. He's on the bike right now, making sure that lower extremity stays warm. He had ice <laughs> being applied to that right shin calf area, but he was in the meeting just now. He seems to be all right. Henry, Henry trying to stay warm. That is his 40 time would go down to 4-4. Four, four I, 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 I will say, I, I think Jamie was in on the jump there with the lower extremity right there. <laughs> yes, she was. <laughs> Third down at three. Very good, Jamie. Lenski takes his time, looks over to the sideline. Joyner is in there in a slot on the right, as is Muse, the tight end. It's a big third down. All of them are from here on out, and it's Brian Edwards who got it for him. I'll tell you, Will Muschamp challenged his receivers and corners. You're going to be facing, it's man-to-man -man all day. On defense, you're playing man-to-man. -man. Receivers are going against man-to-man. -man. Show something. And I'll tell you, I thought Brian Edwards had probably been the star of the game. Yes, Ryan Holinsky has probably been the guy that they needed to come through, and he has. But Brian Edwards, I think, is showing why everybody thinks he's such one of the top receivers in South Carolina history. Here. They came in tied for third in career catches. The Sterling Sharp ball out. Was it a forward pass or not? I think that's a fumble. Anthony Jennings forced it. And they say Alabama ball. That time the heat came from the backside. He just didn't feel it, I don't think. Yep, the ball, it's a hand is free. The ball's not in control. It's his arm and hand come forward. Easy call for a fumble. And sooner or later, those five star recruits make a play, right? Yep. Coming around the corner. They spot it at the 47 yard line. I, I think it's kind of obvious, but the biggest play of the game so far is the non touchdown call for South Carolina to get in the play in the game, right? You're down seven if that thing's a touchdown. And then. They don't react well. You fumble the next snap. Yeah, and it's, it's just from there, it did not go well. Uh, 
might be reviewing this last play. I thought the touchdown clay was closer than this. I was going to say maybe they should have reviewed that one. Gene Steratore, what do you got? That, what I have is I have a forward. Or a, it's a fumble push forward. And this football only has to be in control of a quarterback's hand for one camera frame or two if he has control to make it a forward pass. But in this case, this ball is definitely knocked loose, in my opinion, before the arm starts forward. That contact right there, the ball comes loose before it starts. After review, and the ruling, the ruling of the field is, is confirmed. It confirmed, and Gene is right, and thank you, sir. You know, Gene will be with us all year long as our rules analyst, which helps us because <laughs> we can get out of the way once in a while. Well, emotionally put a lot into this week with his football team, sold them that they could play man to man with these guys all across the field, challenged his players to make those plays, and they have just almost got us into a third or fourth quarter game. They can't let another one go on the board right here. First down. Magamaloa, Jerry Judy in motion toward the ball. And he's going to whip it out to him. Judy in the flats. They want to have this. Another. And look at him go. Flags down at the end of the play, but he got it to the 35. You know, there's, there should be a stat in football. Is yards after a catch, yes, but busted yards. He should be down. Right, right there. there, or right, right there. there. So now you're a coach. You look at your six. guys and go, "Listen, we can yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down." We can live with five yards. We can live with eight yards. But when we got three guys that can't tackle this guy. We either got to recruit better, or you got to learn to tackle better. <laughs> so they'll back it up right to the midfield stripe to take away some of what Judy picked up on that pass play. Go back to what you said about Will Muschamp and try to get it to the fourth quarter. He said, you know, we can't lose the game before it starts. You can't lose to the emblem. Right. And that means the A of that gentleman's shirt. And that's not just a fan. That's a lot of people lose to him. But so far they have not lost to the emblem and they've hung in there. But they're still down 18. Just on the South Carolina side of the 50. Brian Robinson. And dragging people with it inside the 40 to the 39. When we talked to Nick, Nick Saban about Najee Harris, he said, Yes, we'd like to more from Najee, but Brian Robinson's showing us what are we supposed to do? Not give him the ball? Every time he carries the ball, he does it right, he makes positive yards. We have to keep using both backs. And they're going to try to run it some more. And it is Robinson for a few more. What about three or four? As they work it down just outside the 35 yard line, our scholar athletes today, Dylan Wadham, criminal justice major, he and his brother both on the honor roll, Miller Forrestall, marketing, pursuing a master's in marketing, the tight end for Alabama, who was once a quarterback in high school in Cartersville, Georgia. And then this long haired guy came along named Trevor Lawrence. He said, I think I'll move to tight end. Exactly. Or the coach said, I think you should move to tight end. Clemson with the game of Syracuse tonight. Here's a hand off to Robinson. Three straight carries and three straight good carries for the junior out of Tuscaloosa. I think this is a prove it to me drive by Nick Saban. Okay, offensive line. We've watched you for a couple weeks. We've heard it that you're a step away. We've had too many different guys playing. We've had injuries. Deontay Brown's on the sideline for three more weeks. Let's see what you got. If there's a part of the game that we have to run the ball. Can we run the ball? I think he wants to know. So far, so good on this drive. Two is split out. Is this Wildcat here, or who's in the game? Two Shane, is way down here. Shane Bolden. This is a little different. He's going to keep it, and he's going to get it. Shane Bolden, a redshirt freshman. Shane Bolden on the carry. <laughs> A strange he, did, he did not get a great spot though on this one. Yeah, moving the chains already. Yeah, that was close. So he got it to the 29 by diving forward and kind of spinning. I thought, he was his, on, I thought it was, was I know, but it was left elbow was down prior to that though, Brad. Again, I think worth a look. Two are back at the controls. Forrestal, 
motion toward the ball on the 29 yard line. To a, just a half a play back to Robinson and that fires across the middle to Forrestal who dives to the 22 or 3. Two is accepting the coaching that Nick Saban demanded and Steve Sarkeesian has brought. If it's not their downfield, they do not want those spin moves and sticking your arms out and buying time. I want you to drop it off to the guy in the flat and make it second, three, four, five, or six. And he is following the coaching in this football game. They also want him to take less hits. They need him healthy. Down the middle. Just overshot Judy. Three guys back there trying to stay with number four, and he had two steps on all of them. He wanted to go slant. There was nothing there that time. He wants to go slant right here, not there. Judy has to go behind it, and then he has to throw it over the top of the safety that time. It needed to be a touch pass. Good defense that time for the Gamecocks. Third down at three. See if the Gamecocks can force a field goal and not give up a first down here to the tie. up in the slot. He looks that way. He fires far side. He's got it. First down. You know, that's pretty good coverage, too, Brad. I mean, I don't know what else you could do. I mean, that's a far hash throw to the sideline. Now, watch how much space there is here. Not much, and it's put right out there in front of his face. McQuamu's going, what am I supposed to do? Exactly. That's why there are teams tanking for Tua right now <laughs> after that throw. They're back in the red zone at the 16 as we approach three and a half minutes. Najee Harris back with two in the backfield. He fakes it to him. Thought to throw back to him, but it goes to the tight end. And he's got the catch. Does he have the touchdown? He's out of bounds at the five. It was actually this, almost the same play they hit for the touchdown before. Fake to the back, look, wheel round out there, come to your second guy. Tua is putting out a coaching clinic of what they want from him in the future. Really Tennyson Tennyson just couldn't quite keep right his foot in bounds. It is close, isn't it? We're really close. Spins out of it. Don't block the camera. Ooh. I don't know. I know. I know. Yes, it is. <laughs> First and goal inside the five. Harris slipped a little bit in the backfield and that cost him a game. He lost yardage. Avon Kinlaw, one of the first guys there. Another look at Major Tennyson on this reception. Spins him off. His momentum takes him. Not out there. No. I guess if he wears a 12 wide instead of medium, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't see it. I still, wow, I still see grass green grass. That's a touchdown. Grass. That should have been a touchdown. And again, deserved the look. Back at the six after the loss by Harris. Second and goal. A little toss to Judy. Oh, he's not going to get there. That goes as a pass. Even though it's just a little flip forward. So another reception for Gary. Well, at least the close looks are even one to one now, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Under two minutes in the quarter and a third down and goal. Career high in yardage. If he's thinking four downs, he can run. Or is he just going to give the ball to two and say, get us a touchdown? Or Brian Robinson, who's behind him. It is Brian Robinson. And he's come down for a loss. And it's Ernest enough. Jones, the didn't, linebacker. Yeah, didn't game enough, did he? Now you got to go field goal. Again, you talk to Tavares Robinson, defensive coordinator. He says 53 is a smart, good football player. Reacts to plays, formations, motion as good as anybody he's coached, and you could see it right there. Weeded everybody out, made the play. One of the captains out of Wake Cross, Georgia. Now it's Reichert. 
We'll try a 21 yarder right in the middle of the field. And that's up and good. Attack on three more for the Crimson Tide. As they go up 34 to 13 with that field goal with just under a minute remaining. Third quarter here in Columbia. No Fumble snap. There was a lot of stuff that happened right at the end of the half. And considering South Carolina drove well at the beginning of the half, it could have been a completely different look at, as this football game is right now. Shai Smith lets that one go, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Next Saturday, buckle up. Big day for us. First, Auburn takes on Texas A&M at College Station. Later on, two top ten teams, Notre Dame and Georgia. So toe to toe in prime time will be there at Dooley Field and Sanford Stadium. It all starts at 2.30 Eastern with a drive to Atlanta followed by the college football today at three right here on CBS. One of those significant September games outside of conference play that the committee will look at at the end of the year. Georgia wins that game against Notre Dame. That means, you know, the SEC has fared pretty well at the top of their conference in those big games. LSU over Texas and Auburn over Oregon. Here's South Carolina trying to be over the top of Alabama, and they're still working hard. Boy, they have played hard today. Dowdle picks up 11 or 12 and a first down. Get the ball cutback. Yep, there's the cutback. One seam on the stretch play. You're telling your back. As you stretch it, look for that cutback, and he got it, and made that big positive play. They'll try Rico again. This time left side. He breaks into the clear. Rico Donald. Nice move inside the 40, still going down inside the 30 yard line. In the final 20 seconds of the third quarter. 33 yard pickup for Rico Donald. Talked to the coaches, they said Rico Donald has had the best camp he's had since he's been at South Carolina. Good blocking up front and another positive run play. Walensky got away from the rush momentarily at least and throws Muse right in. That's two of them for Muse. Big one over the middle and another one right there. Rico Donald almost 100 yards on the ground through three quarters. And this would have been another first down. In the open, I said I did not think that the guy who did not come through in this game would be Ryan Holinsky. He's too talented to throw in the ball, and that has been the case. He's been up to the task. Now, Alabama's a tough task. You, you know, you have to play almost perfect to beat him, and everybody else hasn't been there yet either. Holinsky has more time this time. Throws it away, intended for Otre Smith. Columbia, Alabama with a 21 point lead heading into the final stanza and South Carolina's got a big play to open the quarter third and ten at the 30 yard line Olinsky. Yeah, that's not going to do it and we know now Gary in the fourth quarter it's not like they haven't pulled out all this yes stops, but they're yes. down three touchdowns we got 50 they're going to have to pull a bunch of stuff yeah, but for this football team I think they're going to feel better about themselves after this game than they did after the opening game yeah. if they survive their schedules in front of them Missouri Kentucky Tennessee Vandy Appalachia State games they have to win because they were just to have the toughest schedule in all of football they play number one two and three yep so you got to win the games you can win and the other ones you got to survive now they've survived and they showed promise today. they've got number two here they got an off week before they play number three Georgia and of course they close their campaign against the team that's currently number one their cross state rivals from Clemson that's why that North Carolina game hurt so much that was one that they had to have in the overall picture of their schedule Parker White will try a 48 yard and will be a career long So we said they just have to keep inching closer pulling out all the stops in this case it's three more at least stadium in Columbia South Carolina hoping they could do what they did nine years ago and they had pulled out all the stops a fake field goal that would have been a touchdown but there was a holding call that's one that got away from them to a tackle below is thrown for 392 yards a career high four touchdowns Ruggs and Judy and Najee Harris has got a couple his first two ever Ryan Alinsky's hung in there though he threw a dart right here to get the game a little bit closer Shai Smith on the receiving end of that one 
The Tagovailoa, Najee Harris, one of the great plays you'll see this week. Broke a tackle, hurdled another, broke another arm tackle and got in the end zone. And Alabama stops South Carolina at the end of the first half. And they had timeouts to use. They fumbled the ball. They didn't get a field goal. They could have at least used three. And then Devontae Smith, 42-yard touchdown not that long ago. And he's got 125 yards on seven catches. And that's pretty much where we are right now. Will Tommy to kick off. As we're one play into two plays in, I should say, to the fourth quarter. And it's an outside. Didn't go anywhere, or did it? It finally made it there, but too, way too late. Everybody overran it and recovered. I was just going to say to you, they're not going to onside kick this thing, are they? But They've got every possible fake they got in. And that one, he almost tripped over it. He didn't leave anything in the bag, did he? Wow, this and then, game you know, that checked. actually did go far It did. Enough. It made it right at the end, although well, it hit he touched him. it, it hit anyway. Him I didn't see that the yeah. first time. Once he hits it, it cannot be recovered by South Carolina again. It was a free ball. That can only go to Alabama. Said that. No, I understand. I didn't see it hit him, but it sure was a dribbler yeah. to get to where it got. So now you get to a tackle below a short field here at the 43 yard line. Remember when they uh, the 40 yard line. Yep. Remember when they tried the, the fake punt they had a short field they held that time. Yep. That was part of our Exxon mobile game recap. <laughs> so Will's let it all out. The only thing he hasn't done is get fined in this game. No. After the one word answer yes. to Jamie at that time he still got money in his pocket to spare. <laughs> I, I think I'd have gone for the fine just to let it fly. <laughs> Najee Harris with Tagovailo in the backfield. Fakes it to him. Hesitates and now comes over the middle. The runs on the run on the crosser. Got a block from Harris. And out of bounds with the first down. The only guy that's been quiet in this game, Jalen Waddle. And believe me, if he gets the ball, he's going to go too. Can you imagine this? I mean, it, to me, watching this game, it appears that Alabama's defense is still a bit vulnerable. You know, they got youth, they got injuries, and the way the modern offenses are, the old days of Alabama holding people to 10 points are over. Yeah. But it's hard to I, hold anybody to 10 points. But how are you going to slow down this group right here? Because even in that championship game, they were moving the ball against Clemson. They just didn't push it in in the red zone. Tua throws out to Najee Harris. And he powers his way. Boy, he has played hard today. Sure has. We called his number early, whether or not it would be on the ground, or we didn't expect as a receiver this many times, I don't think. He's caught and more it, balls today than he did last year. And it does make sense. If you're going into meetings on Monday and Tuesday for Alabama, we go, we need to establish our running back and our pass game. Najee's a good receiver. How do we get him kind of off the nine right here? So they can never get it going, and finally he feels comfortable out there. Scott Hunter is the all-time leader at 484 in Alabama history for yards a game. Two is over 400, and he's looking for more here. And he's got it, and it's another touchdown. Devontae Smith, that's number five, through the air for Tua Tagovailoa. Really cool how he bought a little time by moving up in the pocket here. Watch. He's anticipating the crisscross. He moves up, buys time, throws across his body, and makes a perfect throw. Extra point upcoming. And it hit the left upright. Here we go again. And There's always something to work on. <laughs> Alabama practice. <laughs> oh boy. Well, it was only a 40 yard drive, didn't take very long, a little over a minute. But 27 to 35, 432 yards for Tua Tagovailoa, including this strike to Devontae Smith, his fifth scoring toss of the day. Looking on the capital city. 
Right, Reminder, don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Alabama with another touchdown, a missed extra point. They're 40 to 16. Rikerd. So they bring it out to the 25 yard line. Well, our SEC family's grown quite a bit since the summer. Congratulations to our longtime graphics operator, Allie. <laughs> and her husband, Tony Skiera, and the birth of Adam. Our associate director, Brian Sealing. Brian's not here. He and his wife, Blair, had their first baby, Bryn, this past Sunday. And our own Jamie Erdahl right. and her husband Sam welcomed little baby Brooke this past July. She's a beauty, <laughs> just like her mama. She's a beauty. She, and dad is home with her right now, and I just hope she's okay when I get back. I know. We've uh, all been worried about what <laughs> Sam is doing to that poor girl while you're gone. Jamie, just to let you know, Sam texts me. She's got a lower leg ex <laughs> a lower extremity ex injury. He just, he just texted me. I spilled two ounces out of the bottle. I think she's hungry. I said, right. feed her more. Just keep feeding her. Keep her fat and happy. Uh, <laughs> paper towels and squeeze it back in. Mom's not <laughs> home. Brooke just turned uh, two months earlier this week had a holding call against Alabama we call that on Josh Job I think so first down at the 35 Walensky gonna throw out the flat complete to Shy Smith Smith nice speed got a first down it appears at the 45 He's out at practice uh, Thursday watching them, you know, work. This, this is an upgraded football team. Will has done a good job recruiting. One to 85, this is a team way more talented than he was two years ago. They're on the right path, and it looks like, you know, with the unfortunate injury to Bentley, that they've got a replacement ready to go for the next three years. Smith in motion. It's a counter on the ground to Rico Dottle, who's had a really good game. Coming up tonight, 8 Eastern over on CBS Sports Network. Get ready for a Texas size showdown. Sam Endlinger looks to lead the 12th ranked Longhorns against the Rice Owls in Houston. That'll be a dandy. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell will have the call. And of course, Texas trying to rebound from the loss to LSU. Malinsky, quick slants. Josh Van with the catch. Hey, what? Ryan's been a busy guy. Is that his 44th attempt of the day? Uh, you're right. Right on. 44, 28 for 44. For the most part, again, he has looked apart. You could not tell. If you had to guess what year he was, there's nobody say this is his second game in football. No. With the football all day. Yep. Well, he's comes from a quarterback family. His brother Kelly was a quarterback in college. We talked about his late brother Tyler, who played at Washington State. Interesting. We asked Will, how did you get him? And he said, Dan Werner, the quarterback coach, liked him on tape. And when we talked to him, he said, I really want to play in the SEC. Yeah. It took a little bit of a SEC tour. His mom and dad, they went to Georgia, they went to Tennessee, yep. uh, they came here, they went to Ole Miss, and he just said, this felt like home, even though it's 2,500 miles away or wherever. I like that Nestler calling my plays, is what I think he said. I'm pretty sure he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, like those 3.30 I like Danielson's games. critique yeah, at 3.30. Like, hey, how can you say? <laughs> I wish I could have played like that when I was that age. A little delay give to Feaster, and he's only gonna get about a yard. Talked about Kim and Mark. They have not moved to the area here. So I get to see their son play every home game and every away game. Boy, he's really played well in the two weeks he's been out there as the starter, and he's the future. Now, you know, Jake's got yes. a, a decision to make. He's probably going to be healthy by maybe Christmas time with the foot injury that he had surgery on on Tuesday. I know what I'd do when I was him. I'd go to Oklahoma. <laughs> as a grad, as yeah, a grad transfer, transfer win Heisman. <laughs> and then go to the pros. <laughs> Just that simple. Right. It's my first call, isn't it? That yeah. Year? Well, Jake would have had all the passing records in South Carolina had he been around for this season. 
We saw Todd Ellis uh, the other day. Todd's still up there in a lot of the categories, and he's a play-by-play -play guy on a radio a for one, South Carolina. He said, he said my kid called me and said, well, I hate that Jake got hurt, but a lot of your records are safer now. Gallows <laughs> <laughs> humor there. Yeah, it's terrible. Four down and five. Well, Lewis almost jumped into the neutral zone. Gamecocks take their time with two on the play clock. Walensky backpedaling, has to throw off his back foot, and he got it complete. Nice throw. The Johnny Manziel throw right there. To Feaster for the first down. When Manziel did that to Alabama, they were going, come on, you're not going to make another one of those throws. Back it up to his left, throwing to his right with a guy in his wow. face right over the top of a linebacker. Ain't no defense for that one. No, that's for sure. First down, the 24. And Feaster's going to lose a couple. You know, the game has changed so much, uh, the way the quick passing game, that the, the way these defenses were built and that whole coaching tree from Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, you know, Will Muschamp right here, it was affect the quarterback. Yeah. Affect them with that pass rush, disguising the defense, but with the hurry up and the shotgun and the bubble screens, you can't the RP, get there. can't not get there. They got one! Five wides here, including Muse, the tight end in the slot. Walensky scans the field, goes to the end zone. This is accepted by Xavier McKinney. And he's going to wisely take a knee. First mistake, had the crossing route right in front of him. Went for the hero throw, and I think for the whole day, that might be the worst uh, decision he's made. Watch, coming right across him, you got an easy throw right in the middle of the field. Got it, take it, make your eight, nine yards, throw it right into coverage. And nothing but bad things happen when you do that. He got away with one to Shy Smith earlier, kind of like that, but it was a better throw than that one, and he knows it. He's still fighting the fight, though. 4016. Stadium, and we'll be assured of a record crowd in Athens. It's the hottest ticket I can remember, and they brought in temporary seating, so we know it's going to be the biggest crowd ever. I talked to Ian Book this summer. I said, you're going to love Athens at night, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, Jake Fromm went into Notre Dame Stadium and right. played that game. Now, there were a lot of Georgia people there. You know that area. Anybody going to sell their tickets? Any Georgia oh, fans? Oh, I, I don't think not as many as Notre Dame did. <laughs> I don't think so either. No. But the key is Ian Book has to play to the level that appears like he played today. Yep. Because <laughs> I've watched three, two Georgia games already. They're a machine right now. They run the ball. Any play they call so far has been a, you know, a chunk play. Yeah. And you're averaging 10 yards a play. It helps. Of course, they haven't played the kind of competition they're going to see against Notre Dame or when they get in the meat of the SEC. That was a great, that great cut that time by Brian Robinson. He starts out inside. Then he goes outside, sets up his blocks, and then sticks his foot in the ground and cuts up and makes the positive play. I think they're going to be happy with the way the running backs have played yes. today. Man, we get a curtain call for Tua. If you're wondering why it says TU and then the uh, period there, instead of just Tagovailoa, his little brother is the third string quarterback. And he said, I still don't know why they just couldn't have left. I only got one more letter in my first name. Why just not TUA <laughs> instead exactly. of just TU? Give me it all. <laughs> By a vowel. Exactly. <laughs> Mac Jones is in at quarterback. Brian Robinson again. This time South Carolina waiting for him. And he'll go down for a loss. To his final numbers as his curtain call has been taken and the towel's over the head. Not a bad one. 28 of 36, 4, 44, and 5. Yeah, don't sleep on Tua in this Heisman thing. I know no. he's one of the, you know, oh, this guy's going to go ahead of him. This guy's going to, uh, he's going to get his chance to serve. And let's There's take Talia. it. Talia's ready to go. That's why there's two different, he's got, uh, he's got the T and uh, Sue has got the T-U, <laughs> if that makes sense. Really? <laughs> Which, could he turn around for us? I want to see what he's got. He might have a T-A, I think. I bet it's a T-A. Judy. A quick out for Mac Jones. But Mac Jones is the backup quarterback in a game that mattered. Tua goes down, and remember, last year they had a pretty good backup quarterback. And Mac played tennis as well in high school, and 
Nick Saban was saying he's kind of got the John McEnroe attitude when he makes a bad play and wants to break his racket and I keep telling him if you're going to be a quarterback you have to stay uh, calm. <laughs> how about this I mean my mother brother sister all college athletes dad's a professional tennis player Gee, that's worked out well. They're down at five. Nice oh, stop from Holy Judy. And he gets down the sideline as fast as anybody Let's I've ever see seen. if there was a push on this one. Kwa, Kwamu right here is in the. Oh, yeah, he shoves him right down, doesn't he? They're hand fighting, and he shoves him. Pick up of 30. Israel Mukwabu says uh, he's pretty hard to cover anyway. He's allowed to do that. <laughs> he gets from zero to 60 in a hurry, sure does. doesn't he? Yeah, he's going to be a top five draft pick. Backup offensive line has now come in. Five six and a half minutes. Backup people at the 22 yard line trying to get their reps in. Ryan Robinson still in there at tailback trying to bounce it outside. So you got a half a yard. And Williams Bryce Stadium fans have hung around pretty good. They still have been the exits on their last touchdown a little bit, but they came out in full force hoping for an upset like they saw nine years ago. Not going to happen today. I'll, I'll tell you, last year when we came here against Georgia, I, I thought after the game I was a little like, oh, that's a, not a very good football team. Now they run to the ship once a game. This year I'm much more impressed watching this game. Got ugly at the end. They made a game of this thing. Yeah, they did. Keelan Robinson, true freshman on that last carry. Miss Fall, new comedy about love, life, and friendship. Don't miss The Unicorn premieres Thursday, September 26th on CBS. And Alabama back in the red zone. Still not a lot of rushing yards, but they had so many short passes to the running backs that they turned into big chunks. It was almost like handoffs. Yeah, it's unconventional runs. You know, they're different types of runs. Long handoff runs. Jones fires, got his man. And it was Slade Bolden who got that. First down out of a wildcat a little bit earlier, and he's got a reception here. Good work up into the pocket, ball to the outside shoulder or nice outside throw. number, perfect. Nice throw and catch, and it gets it to the four yard line. This is where people start saying, you know, the game is over, but the guys that are out there want to play too. Well, most, <laughs> you know? Brad, mostly the quarterback, though. You've got to get the reps for. Jones and Casey has to play when it matters. Exactly. That's where you need the reps. Here's Robinson, the freshman. Puts his head down, keeps his feet going. I think he got close to the one. Robinson, JT Bay. Bay finally brought him down. Of course, the one running back that they're missing that they counted on, Trey Saunders, their five star running back, injured for, out for the year. So it's been Harrison, Brian Robinson, Helian Robinson, Jerome Ford. Those four guys have been sharing. The rushing attempts. 69 straight games with 100 plus. And we don't have. They might not get another possession to get any more. That looked like a uh, false start or something went on. False well, start. Lot two. Offense number 81. Yep. Five yard penalty. Back up tight. Second down. Cameron Latu a year ago was a defensive end. They moved him over to the H back tight end position. It's going to be a process. Big looking guy, 6'5, 250 at least. So Nick Saban is about to go in the next three and a half minutes to 17 and 0 against his former assistant coaches in their head coaching capacities now. South Carolina stops the run there. Robinson didn't get much. Well, I know he's going to have to face one more for sure. When he's 17 and 0, he's going to face Jimbo, right? That's right. Okay. And if he beats Jimbo, 
He likely will run into another one if he gets Kirby. to the championship. There <laughs> yeah, you go. How long can the run go? <laughs> I don't know so far. To be the man, you got to beat the man, as my friend Ric Flair would exactly. say. And so far, nobody's been able to beat him. As I said in the pregame show, Kirby has built a monster. They match up man for man, talent for talent, quarterback for quarterback. And Robinson didn't get there this time. I think he bounced in. He's short. He's about at the one foot line. RJ Roderick out there still making tackles in his safety spot. Patient, patient, turn in. Good job. Get your butt in the hole. Perfect job by Tommy Brown, number 75. Wall off your man, turn him to the outside, but once he's carrying the football in his head, it's going to be just a little bit short. <laughs> a helmet score. Yes. Fourth down and a foot. As you look up above Mac Jones. Keelan Robinson on the offensive line. Mac Jones trying to do it himself. Oh, second effort. He's in. Touchdown. We'll give him a one yarder on that one. More like 16 inches or so, but it's a touchdown and Tua with a big smile for his backup quarterback. Yeah. Running behind two true freshmen, Darren Delcourt, number 71, Evan Emil Ekior, number. 55 just keep pushing keep moving keep trying to put in or Matt Womack's in the game 77 and two goes yeah <laughs> it's fun to win isn't it sure is it's fun to win almost an eight minute drive 80 yards in 12 plays Rocker who missed his last extra point drills this one and that makes it 47 to 16 just a couple of minutes left here in Columbia. Back at Williams Bryce Stadium with a couple of minutes remaining. After an 80 yard drive by Alabama and quite a few of their backups. Got it in the end zone, the lead 47 16. On the kick return, Shy Smith. Right across the 20, up to about the 23 yard line this time. Take a look at our GMC game changers. RPO time, Gary. It sure was. Three different times, three huge RPOs. Big first down there. This one goes to the house. Judy doesn't get it. Watch him just get a little deflection, enough for the fastest man playing for Alabama to take it to the house. Rugs, and then one more. He's faking, he's looking, he's looking to his right, he's looking to his left. Deontay Smith gets it. One fake, whiff, into the end zone. That is Quite a weapon. Now, I felt last year Alabama relied on it too much, but what are you going to do? You're calling it works. It's a touchdown. Yeah. And the quarterback for South Carolina still throwing it around. Shai Smith, uh, the arm of Brian Kalinsky. These are just snaps now. These are just reps. This is like practice for Will Muschamp. He's getting his quarterback ready for the rest of his schedule. The only thing you don't want to have happen here is lose a key guy. Yeah, exactly. That was his third decision on that one. He looked right, looked to the middle, and then the outside. Here's the rest of what Gary was talking about getting ready for. At Missouri, Kentucky here, an open date before third-ranked Georgia, then Florida after that. Tennessee, Vandy, and the open date before Clemson, and then that includes Texas, uh, Texas A&M. I almost yes. forgot that. So most people think this is, if not the toughest schedule in college football, it's in the top three. Will in his fourth year here. Going to be 0 and 3 against Alabama now. 0 and 2 against them while he was at Florida. Uh, he couldn't. He couldn't coach more aggressively than he did today. No. Nope. Did everything possible. They didn't hold anything back. And oh boy, what you just said. It's the one thing you don't want to have happen. He's okay. Is the extra reps worth Ooh. one of those injuries right there? Barmore got it from behind. And yep. luckily he had a fairly decent landing. Yeah, and you never know though. You know, Jake Bentley did not know he broke his foot or whatever it was no, either. After last the game, play. It got sore and sore at the night went through and he came back the next day. He did not think it was bad. 
Quick toss. And first down to Banks. To Feaster. So a couple more throws from Ryan if they're complete. He'll be over 300 yards passing. He's got 293 right now. The Missouri game will be an interesting test for them. E pretty equal football game at Missouri. Equal talent on the field. You know, Ness, we going back to that 2010 game that South Carolina upset Alabama, 19 straight wins. On the field that day for Alabama, Alabama had 10 number one draft picks playing in that football game. South Carolina had two. And it was really interesting. Is Toy Gurley, the wide receiver, said, I knew it was a big game because when I went to see Coach that Sunday, he didn't have a golf club in his hand, Coach Curry, when he was talking to us. He was laying out the game plan without a golf club. I knew it was a big game. Had to be big. That was DeCarry and Joyner, the backup quarterback who made that last catch. Ryan Wheaton got away with one there. Ooh. It was almost a helmet to helmet job by Jared Maiden. I think that's a good go. No call. Jared Maiden sees the ball going to the receiver. Plays the quarterback. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's that might have got him fine. I don't think that's any big deal. He pushed him with his elbows that time. I know we're always trying to protect the defenseless player, but I don't see it there. That one, almost was. That one could be. Josh Van. Caho kind of late there. Yep. Final 30 seconds. Four receivers to the right. They'll come back to the left with the throw to the corner. Nope. Not quite. Or Trey Smith had his hands on it, but he ran out of real estate over there. Perfect phase that time. Stay right with the runner. Look back when he looks back. Right to the outside, Job right there. Perfect defense. Push him to the sideline. Make sure there's very little field out there. Needed about two more feet over there. Fourth down. 37, 37, 37. Donald empties the backfield. For Ryan Olinsky to throw one more time at least. And he took a mouthful as he let go of that man. And a flag. And I think that was Barmore again who maybe got away with one earlier and this one is right in the chin. Oh, oh man. He didn't slow down, did he? No, he didn't. Mm. So, automatic first down. Previous players on the further review. Ryan still adjusting the helmet. A tough cookie, man. He got right back up. Got that, that hurt up here. Yeah, when you're coming in there at the defense lineman, and it's hard, but you got to hit the target area on the quarterback. You got to go in his chest area. When you go in high like that, you're vulnerable to be called targeting. They want to take that hit to the head and neck area away from the defenseless player. Christian Barmore, redshirt freshman out of Philadelphia, might find himself sitting out the first half of the next game targeting there's the indicators one of the three you have to have and that looked like a <laughs> hey, well, he did, about he all did. of those to me I don't, I don't think he launched okay kind of ran through him but he sure got him in the neck and head area the hit was too high you got to bring it down with the shoulder pads in the chest after review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 58 is disqualified. I'm not surprised. No. Gene Steratore, you agree with us, Gene? Most definitely, guys. For this reason, a quarterback releasing the ball is a defenseless player. So that contact initiated to the head and neck area on a defenseless player definitely rises to the level of targeting. Good job by review. Good job by the officials. 
And you know what, at this point, there's frustration that's that's coming from the sideline a little and, and some over-aggressiveness. So the officials do have to continue to be diligent and finish the game and make sure it finishes as clean as possible. Hey, Gene, just a comment here. In a game like this, when it's out and the backups are in the game, you know they're trying to make a name for himself. Do you have to warn those guys? Uh, because they're eager to make a play. A yes, you throw. do, Gary. Yeah, I can see these young guys who've been waiting to get a shot on this guy all day to show the coach how they can rush the ball. They just don't do it the right way as they finish off the game with a touchdown here. Kyle Markway, the tight end, 11 yard scoring toss, Solinsky's second of the day. So he was playing to the final whistle, and so had the game cost back. Right across the face of Coho that time. When you're playing inside technique, the one way you can't do it, you're not going to get on the field for a Nick Saban team when you have that technique and let the tight end go right by you. How about that throw by Helensky, though? You that take a, a targeting beauty. and throw a touchdown. Playing to the end for South Carolina. They went a minute 53 seconds to go 76 yards in 11 plays. And Ryan helensky has got his second scoring toss. Over 300 yards on the day. Went on around the country. Look ahead to tonight. Let's talk about this one a little bit. There were a few Alabama fans not happy with that last touchdown. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Some very interested fans. Yeah, I guess. And well, to bring it out to the 25. Nick will win another game to go 3 and 0. Come up Thursday, September 26. America's favorite kid genius, Sheldon Cooper's back. Catch a season premiere, Young Sheldon, and New Time, 8 7 Central, here on CBS. So Alabama is not going to lose their ranking. Georgia's not going to lose their ranking. Clemson plays tonight. Ohio State one handily again today. Who am I missing? I don't know, just in the top five anyway. You know, you you would think if, so. How do you how do you beat Alabama? You better be ready to score points. Yeah, I think you got to score was, more than them. Yes, I think Will was right. <laughs> what are you going to do on offense? We got to score. Well, two old friends, one uh, mentor, I guess, and the other guy, one of his pupils along the way. And it's 17 and 0 for Nick Saban against his former assistant coaches. Jamie's with Nick. Coach Tua had a tremendous day. Through your eyes, to what degree is he executing the game plan that's put in front of him in a game like this? Well, he does a great job of executing the offense. You know, a lot of those plays that we end up throwing the ball on are really could be runs or passes. They played a lot of six guys in the box, so they all ended up being passes, and he executed really well. And receivers did a good job of catching and run with it. Catching the ball, Najee Harris out of the backfield. What in your gut told you that that was a good game plan for him today? Well, Najee's a really good receiver. He's a good third down back, and you know we love to utilize him in the passing game. And he's good receiver, but he's also good running after the catch. So we're, we're always excited to get him involved. Coach, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Najee Harris is right here. We're going to bring him in. Man, you had 11 catches in your career coming into today, and then you get five plus two touchdowns. How did that game unfold for you in the offense? Um, well, you know, they unfolded good. Um, we expected, you know, the run game to be pretty slowly because, you know, they have a really good defense. So uh, our coach told us we got to make the best of every opportunity in the pass game, not being the run game, anything. So it worked out, I guess. <laughs> you guessed it, too. You guessed right. All right, thanks. Thank you. You guessed right, Najee. He did. He, <laughs> I thought he had one of the plays of the year is uh, we saw that, that no. jump over hurdle. Well, we're going to look at that.